From Adamson Stadium on the campus of California University of Pennsylvania, it's the PSAC State Championship football game where the California Vulcans take on the Kutztown Golden Bears. Hello and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Anthony Diagasino and alongside me today is Dylan Gaudet. And Dylan, this is a beautiful day for football. Clear skies, the sun, sorry, right in our eyes right now. And uh, it's just a great day for football between these two teams, it's one from the PSAC West and one from the PSAC East. Yeah, it's a big atmosphere here. 12 o'clock click kickoff. Uh, most of the school is here ready. Uh, just a great atmosphere. We have three different television crews here, so we're glad to be able to broadcast it for you. ESPN3 Sports Fever is doing it live. And then we have Kutztown here and then CUTV uh, as well. But going into the last game for these two teams, Kutztown took on Cheney and a team California uh, took on in their first game of the season. And Kutztown came away with a pretty solid victory, Dylan. Yeah, Kutztown defeated Cheney 32-6 to last week after they already won the PSAC West title, the we PSAC East title the week before. So they already knew going in that game that they were in the PSAC championship game. They were led by fresh, redshirt freshman quarterback Colin Del Gabo, who happens to be the twin brother of our Christian Del Gabo here for the Vulcans. And for the California Vulcans, they took on Edinburgh in a ranked matchup. Both teams were ranked. Edinburgh, I believe, was 24th in the nation. California ranked sixth, and California came out with a statement victory against Edinburgh last week. Yes, yeah, statement is definitely the right word to use for that one. 52-7, to California defeated Edinburgh last week. They were led once again by the standout senior receiver, Gary Brown. He scored three touchdowns in the victory. And the series history, these, this series goes back all the way to 1990. The last time these two teams met was 2013. Kutztown holds a 7-2-1 record over the California Vulcans. However, California has won the last two games uh, that they've played each other. And in 2013, Cal ended up winning 45-10, Dylan. Yeah, definitely. Both these teams not too familiar with each other, but uh, should be a great game here in the PSAC Championship game. And uh, the, as always, the segment, keys to victory. Dylan, break down the keys to victory for California today. For California, once again, limit penalties. If they're able to limit penalties, it just makes the offense even that much better. And then stay focused. They can't get their emotions too high or too low in this game. They haven't really played in a PSAC championship game, so look for them to keep their emotions in check. And then contain Del Gabo. California has had a problem with running quarterbacks, and that's exactly what Kutztown has. So if they're able to contain him, it could be a definite key to victory. Well, like you said in that second key to victory there, uh, stay focused. The California Vulcans, this, this team has never been to a championship game in any way. NCAAs or the PSAC. The last time they were here, the Vulcans was in 2009 when they lost to Shippensburg. The last time they won it all was 2007, nine years ago. So, Dylan, talk about how important this is for this team. First year with uh, Coach Gary Dunn undefeated. Yeah, definitely. This team, they're new to this situation. They haven't been here in numerous years. None of the players have, so it's new for them. But look for Coach Gary Dunn to lead them to victory today. And break down the keys to victory for this Kutztown team. At Kutztown, limit Cal's explosive plays. California is one of the most explosive teams in the country, so if they're able to limit their explosive plays, that could be huge for them, as well as contain Gary Brown. We've heard, said that all season long for other teams. He's just so explosive and can make such – big plays that uh, it's very important to contain him and then play 60 minutes. California, one thing that they do very well is play for 60 minutes and most teams can't do that against them. So if they're able to play for 60 minutes against this California team, that could lead to a Kutztown victory. Well, you mentioned contain Gary Brown. If you contain Gary Brown, you have so many other threats on this California team. Just break down some of the threats California has. Yeah, quarterback Michael Keir has just led this California team all season long, and that's his favorite target, Gary Brown. And then California has three or four running backs that they can use whenever they want to, and that's definitely huge to, for this explosive offense. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. Again, beautiful weather out here at Adams Stadium. We've got a 12 o'clock kickoff for you as kickoff is next here at the PSAC Championships at Adamson Stadium. CU TV's high school football game of the week. Spring Doe at Jeff Morgan. Avella at California. Bell Vernon at Ringgold. Greensburg Central Catholic at Charleroi. 
Waynesburg at South Moreland. Baldwin at Connellsville. Beth Center at Brownsville. Frazier at Bentworth. Bishop Canavan at Carmichael. The longest running high school coverage in Southwestern PA is on CUTV. CUTV News Center is California University of Pennsylvania's award-winning student television newscast. Your source for live, local, late-breaking news. Forecasts from the Cal U Weather Center. The region's latest entertainment news. Balkan sports highlights and regional scoreboards with television news coverage you can't get anywhere else. Watch it live Thursdays on CUTV and on demand. CUTV News Center, online all the time. Since 1937, the Student Association Incorporated, known as SAI, has served the Cal U student body by providing activities, programs, and services. Every enrolled student has the ability to take part in over 125 different clubs and organizations. Managing participation in every SAI activity is easy with OrgSync, a powerful tool for staying connected. Located one mile from campus, the SAI farm has 94 acres of meeting and recreational space. SAI, it's your student association. For almost 30 years, CUTV has been the campus and community home for local news, sports, and entertainment. Broadcast in 100,000 homes in southwestern Pennsylvania, CUTV provides complete coverage of Vulcan sports as well as high school football coverage. Broadcast weekly live, CUTV News Center provides coverage of local and campus events, weekend weather, sports highlights, and feature stories. For more information on CUTV, check us out on the web, friend us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium. Here are the set feasts for the PSAC State Football Championships here at California University of Pennsylvania. California, number six in the nation, number one in the West, so they host the Kutztown Golden Bears again. Hello and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Anthony Diagasu, and alongside me is Dylan Godet. And Dylan, look at the tail of the tape between these two teams. There's some stark contrast between these two teams. Yeah, definitely. That 52.4 points, points per game for California is one of the best in the whole entire country. The best, actually, in the whole entire country right now opposed to 29 points per game for Kutztown, which is good, but uh, again, not quite as good as this high-powered California offense, and again, the California defense, 14 points per game given up. That, again, is amongst the best in all of Division II football. And then we look down at total yards. Kutztown is able to get the ball moving as well as California. California has four, 473 yards compared to 440 for Kutztown, and uh, both teams like to control the ball for a lot of time. That 32 minutes per game has really risen from around 20 to start out the year. So California's doing a better job of controlling the football. California, you mentioned their defense. They are number one in the conference in scoring. And, you know, we saw a few times fumble, strip sack fumbles scored for touchdown. We saw that at Mercer a few times. Uh, not, don't remember seeing any of that in uh, – other than an interception and fumble for California against Edinburgh, but not as much scoring last game. But still, just this California defense has a way of getting through the offensive line, but for Kutztown, they've only allowed uh, just a handful of sacks still. Yeah, definitely. With a quarterback as good as their quarterback, Colin Del Galvo, he's a threat against this Falcons team. Is his elusive ability. As you said, he's only been sacked a few times on the year. So... For this defense, they're really going to have to contain him and uh, keep him in the pocket because if he's out of the pocket, he can he can break some huge runs. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we mentioned before Gary Brown. He is a senior. This is his senior night. And for a lot of other Vulcans, it's their senior night as well. There you see Gary Brown getting ready uh, for the either the kick return or going on offense. But as you see here, California, I believe, elected to defer – and we're looking at their captains out there now. The referee about to just tell who's doing what. California is going to receive the ball, actually. So I believe Kutztown won the toss, deferred. California will receive it. Gary Brown going to get ready to go as a kick returner. And he is an elusive and speedy kick returner, Dylan. Yes, he definitely is. And kick return touchdowns. He is eighth in all of the country on the kick return touchdowns. And he is also third in uh, return yards, so again, he is uh, a very elusive threat. 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this California team does against a team that they have not faced at all this year and for the past uh, few years. They haven't played them since 2013. However, they did beat them pretty big. Uh, and California ranked sixth in the nation, ranked number one in the region. Uh, this game is regional implicating. And Dylan, we've heard before from the, uh, I believe, the conference president uh, in that region that California, uh, the regional chair committee uh, on president, uh, regional chair committee the, during the MEC game, uh, and he's the commissioner of the MEC, me basically mentioned that this is California's number one spot to lose. If they lose this game, they're going to lose the number one spot. But if they win it, it's basically theirs. Yeah, it's, uh, it's control your own destiny, and that's all you want in uh, college football is to control your own destiny. And uh, they have a great chance to uh, really set this program into the right direction for the next few years getting that number one seat. Yeah, it definitely is. Kutztown getting ready to kick it off here. Game getting underway a little later than was advertised. We're at 12.07 right now. But again, it is a live sports broadcast for Sports Viewer today, so they will be doing all the live event items. And Kutztown getting ready to kick it off. Aaron Terry and Gary Brown, I believe, are back there. As for Kutztown, number 50, Brendan, Brandon Keffer, the sophomore from Calico High School, kicking it off. Not going to Gary Brown as he fumbles the ball. And with an elusive play, they're getting to the 20-yard line and hit pretty hard. That was actually Jimmy Wheeler, as you see the offensive starters for California, Dylan. Yeah, led by quarterback Michael Kieran as well. Gary Brown, a huge threat for this Kutztown defense. Uh, one of the most elusive players in all of Division II football. And that line as well, led by seniors Tyler Pearson, Taylor Nickitzer, and Zach Moorhead. They're a uh, they're a tough offensive line for teams to penetrate. That they are, and Michael Keir going to start from the 21-yard line. Some of the worst field position they've had to start out games. They're usually way d well downfield. Five seconds on the play clock. Not sure how it got that low, but it is. As Keir gets it off in time, goes to Gary Brown. Gary Brown has some room and gets the first down at the 35-yard line, and a nice quick pass to Gary Brown. Just getting enough for the first down, plus five more. Yeah, there we look at the starters, defensive starters here. Kenny Williams, a safety. Uh, look for him to try to slow down these receivers and, uh, as they say, stay deeper than the deepest man. But in our in our open, we mentioned to contain Gary Brown, and there in the first play, he was open uh, for a big first down completion. Michael Keir in a shotgun here. He takes a pass and hands it off to Grissom. And Grissom getting a good chunk of change on that carry, about eight on the carry. Yeah, California is going to be able to run the ball against this Kutztown defense. They've been vulnerable to the run all season long. They are on that seven-game win streak, but again, this California offense is very explosive. They have not faced an offense this high-powered. Here in the shotgun again, receivers on either side. Nearest receiver, I believe, is Gary Brown. As Keir takes the snap, looking to pass. Under a lot of pressure, scrambling, going to and getting taken down for a sack and a big loss there. Yeah, definitely the Michael Keir had an audible on that play and tried to find the open matchup, but Kutztown was ready for it, and he just ran out of time in the pocket, tried to escape. But there, as you can see, the defensive end there, number 88, brought him down in the backfield. Yeah, that was number 88 for Kutztown. Doesn't have a name on the roster. We'll try to find out who that is for you as it's third down and six for the Vulcans. Kier in the gun, three receivers to the near side. Kier taking a pass, throwing it deep down the field to Gary Brown, kind of sailing on him, it's incomplete and no flags there. Good coverage by number 15, Lance Dean Jr., the senior from Bishop McDevitt High School. And that's an underthrown ball there from quarterback Michael Kier to Gary Brown, and we have not seen that too often this season. He's usually overthrowing them, but they're under through the intended target, and uh, now he's going back to punt here. Not too many times we've seen this offense punt on their opening drive either. No, not at all. The first time that I can remember that they punted on their offensive drive. As Michael Keir sends the punt away. It's a high punt. 
and is returned there by number 17, Colin, no. Number 13, Brent, Craig that, Reynolds. Yeah, Craig Reynolds, excuse me. It looked like a seven from here, but just number 13, as you see, the offensive starters here, Colin DeGalbo, the twin brother of Christian DeGalbo here in California. Yeah, definitely. That's a, something that I was talking about a couple weeks ago. We saw that this was a, this was a potential matchup in the PSAC championship game. Big for the two brothers to be facing off here. As DeGalbo has three receivers spread out to his far side. DeGalbo looking to pass. Goes to his wide out and has plenty of space. That's number 86, Troy Parton, the redshirt sophomore from Allentown. And he gets a gain of nine on the, that play. And here are the defensive starters for California. Look for cornerback Vondell Bell, senior free safety Jordan Bowman, and senior strong safety Aaron Terry to try to contain these receivers for Kutztown today. As DeGalbo in the shotgun, three receivers split out to the near side. Second and one as DeGalbo handing it off to his running back spin move there. That's Craig Reynolds, and Reynolds has some room. He gets taken down at the California 45-yard line, and like that, Kutztown has some momentum here. Yeah, Kutztown seems very ready in this one. They are excited and ready to go. There, he, The receiver, the running back there, Reynolds is able to break some tackles and uh, pick up a huge gain on the play. As DeGalbo, first and 10. And they're going to give him some more yards on that. It's going to be from the 43-yard line. As DeGalbo trying to get California to jump off sides, and he did, but he was able to get the get back at the line. Throws the pass to the 40-yard line, and Williams it's complete for a three-yard carry. Up by As you see the replay here. That's what they're going to look to do against California all day, the short passing routes. Not a lot of time with this very good defensive line for California, and if they're able to keep getting those short completions, that could be vulnerable for this California defense. Second and seven for DeGalbo. As DeGalbo handing it off again to Reynolds, and this time Reynolds getting wrapped up maybe a yard after he from the line of scrimmage. And Justin Baker on the tackle, and... Uh, Got to mention, he always, his family is, always comes up and says hello to us and uh, let's say hello to them back and got a good luck hug from his mom. So definitely thanking them for coming and look at their son there, doing a great job. Yeah, a great job in the interior of this defensive line, able to stop Reynolds there for a short game on the play. It's third and six for the Vulcans here. Well, excuse me, the Kutztown Golden Bears, Vulcans defense has DeGabo, empty set. And there's going to be a false start here. The tight end, the near side receiver, number 63, Skylar Pancheri, the junior there, moved a little too early. And there's a penalty there on Kutztown, but we were talking before the game. This is a, California needs to be careful with their penalties as well. You can't hurt yourself if you're California, and you also can't hurt yourself if you're Kutztown against the, the great team like California. It's third and 11 now for the Golden Bears. Empty backfield for DeGalbo. 10 seconds on the play clock. California again almost jumping off sides and throwing that deep down the field. It is complete. What a catch on the far side of the field. And that was Williams with the reception. Unbelievable, Dylan. Yeah, he was able to get behind Vondell Bell there. And they're in prime scoring position now around the 15 yard line. So. This Kutztown team is rolling right now. And they are in red, the red zone here on the 14 yard line. As DeGalbo has one sidecar to his near side, handing it off to, actually he's gonna keep it himself. And he's gonna get taken down at around the 13 yard line. DeGalbo quarterback keep. That's something California's gonna have to be aware of the entire game. DeGalbo is a, Really strong running threat there as California was ready there. Luke Rapcheck and a couple other defenders in the middle of the defense there was able to stop him, but he's going to try to get going on the ground all day long. As second and nine for the Golden Bears. And the Galbo in the gun. Three receivers split out to the near side. One sidecar now. As the Galbo play action. 
going over the middle, incomplete there. Hit Nathan Hollander in the chest. Yeah, great job there by, by Jordan Bowman there for California, breaking that ball up right before it was completed there. Nice strong pass by the Gobbo, just couldn't quite make it in for the completion. Uh, third down and goal here for, third down in the red zone here for this California defense. Third and nine from the 13. As the Galbo in the gun. Craig Reynolds, the far side receiver. Third and nine. DeGalbo looking to pass, going over the middle, incomplete. And he just led Craig Reynolds a little too far, trying to make a diving catch. Yeah, the running back split out there at the receiver position and wasn't able to bring that one in. That could have been a first down there and uh, a nice hold by this California defense in the red zone. They've been able to do that numerous times this season. And uh, that's, a, that's a big stop there to hold them to a field goal. That it is. And they're going to kick the field goal here. So Keffer is going to kick the field goal, about a 30-yard field goal. And that one is up. And it is no good. Wide right. Looked like it may have been blocked at the line, sort of. Kind of had that weird spin. We're going to take a look at the second in a second. But, Dylan, that's a big stand for the Vulcans here. Look at this kick. Yeah, definitely. California's line there was able to penetrate and uh, cause some disruption there in the backfield. And that's a momentum spark that this off offense may need here back at the 20-yard line. They uh, look to get rolling here. Yes, they are. They're back where they started their first drive here. First and 10 Vulcans from the 20. As Michael Keir going to be in the pistol. And he's going to take it and hand it off up there to Nick Grissom. Grissom trying to jump over his own guy. And he gets about eight on the carry. Got uh, upended there by Kenny Williams. If we take a look at the replay, we actually don't have that right now. But uh, he got uh, upended on that play, but still was able to pick up nine yards on the play. Second and... One for the Vulcans here. This running game looks to looks like it can work here early on. A couple big runs to start out. As Kier in the pistol. Four men down for Kutztown. As they send one coming up as Grissom gonna Grissom get two get yards on the carry. carry. That's good for a and that's good enough for a Vulcans down. first down. Again, Grissom just doing what he needs to do to get first downs. Yeah, definitely not a lot of running room there on that play, but he was able to pick up what he needed on that one to pick up the first down and keep this offense going. As Keir going to be in the shotgun, it looks like here. One receiver on either side of the field. Near side is Gary Brown. As Michael Keir changing up some plays at the line of scrimmage here. Two tight ends as well. Haven't seen that formation a lot either. As Keir handing it off up the middle to Grissom. Grissom cutting it back, getting two yards on the carry. Second and eight now for the Vulcans. It looks like that was a little halfback counterplay, Dylan. Yeah, just a straight give there to the running back and uh, no room there. Number 96 on the stop there. Ronnie Tomasetti there for Kutztown. Second and nine with eight minutes to go here in the first quarter. Michael Keir has three receivers to the far side, one of the near, and he's in the shotgun. Keir, screen pass, and goes over to Tom Green, and that gets a gain of about five on the carry. Big for Tom Green to be back after being out a couple weeks ago with an injury. Uh, he's, besides for Gary Brown, he's that second target there that uh, Michael Keir loves to throw to, and he's a very reliable one at that. That he is, and it's going to be third down and three for California. 7.15 on the clock. And it's Keir looking to pass. Going over the middle, and it is intercepted. And that looks like that one was number 85, Chris Mc McConaughey. And it's actually a key Cox Cohen, the freshman defensive back from Harrisburg High School. Yeah, able to undercut that route and pick that one off. 
again, California cannot keep hurting themselves here early on. And uh, some frustration on the sideline as Tom Green runs up to, to Michael Keir, almost asking, what are you doing on that one, buddy? And uh, again, when Kutztown has the ball, as we take a look at that graphic now, 29 points per game, not the most high-powered offense, but definitely someone California needs to look to stop this game. As DeGalbo and the gun. As Craig Reynolds is the side guard on your side. Handing it off up the middle to Craig Reynolds and he's gonna get taken down for a loss of three yards. California just flying through the offensive line. Yeah, what a job there by Cameron Tarver. Again, we had Veterans Day yesterday and he's a veteran of the Navy. He served in the Navy a couple years before coming here. So thank you to, hit, to him for his service and a uh, nice play there. Second and 13 with 6.40 to go on the clock here. As DeGalbo in the shotgun. Double look for the receivers as it's a fake handoff. He keeps it himself and gets taken down for another loss there. Loss of a yard and the defense has come to play today. Yeah, they are ready for that zone read early on. Something that California struggled to stop all season long and the past few seasons they've had trouble stopping that, but they are ready for that this game and uh, doing a great job holding it here early on. Third and 15, as Kutztown going with the triangle look on their receivers near side, as DeGalvo in the shotgun. 10 seconds on the play clock, trying to get California to jump off sides, they don't move and he takes the snap. And it's swatted down at the line again, the offensive line for California. And it looked like Cameron Tarver yet again is doing some great things on defense. Yeah, they teach you to keep your keep your paws up, as they say. And that actually looked like Luke Rapchek there was able to get his paws up and bat that one down. Another big stop. This defense, offense hasn't been rolling early on, but this defense has come to play. As we're going to have a punt here for Kutztown, their first punt of the game. Brown and Terry to receive. And that was almost blocked by California. It's picked up there by Gary Brown, and he has some room to run and gets taken out of bounds at the 45 yard line. And Dylan, we're gonna take a look now at the regional rankings. As we said, California in the first place. Shepard is in second, and they are playing Urbana at one o'clock. However, LIU Post is playing number six Assumption. They beat them the first time they, they were playing, and they're playing right now. Assumption has the lead three to nothing over LIU Post. LIU Post undefeated at 10 and 0. Assumption is 9 and 1. Their only loss coming to it from LIU, LIU Post. Yeah, both those teams are known for their close close ball games the last few years, but again on that last play, I'm not under, I don't quite understand why teams try to kick the ball off to Gary Brown. There's just just it's not a smart play and uh, he's able to make play after play after play. Ball at the 44 yard line as Keir play action goes to Gary Brown and it is complete to Gary Brown on a screen route. Gary Brown up the field. He's at the th 35 to 30 and taken down at the 26 yard line. And Gary Brown. Gary Brown just saved that one there for Michael Keir and uh, looked like it could have been returned for a touchdown if Kutztown was able to intercept this ball. But Gary Brown went up and made a great play. And then once he gets the ball in his hands, it's it's uh it opens up the floodgates and he's able to make a big play there. It doesn't look like Keir necessarily had the ball thrown right. Like, look, it came off his hand wrong as Keir looking to pass here. Going deep down the field to the end zone. This is incomplete as, as Tom Green was trying to make a play there, just kind of underthrown again. Yeah, it looked like offsides there by Kutztown, but the officials do not call that one. And Michael Keir got kind of lucky on this one if uh, he threw that one up and there was not, since there wasn't a penalty and that one was picked off, uh, that could have been another interception there for Michael Keir. 5-10 on the clock here. Second and 10 for the Vulcans from the 26 yard line. Again, another two tight end set, something we're not accustomed to seeing this season. As Keir in the gun, like you said, looking to pass. Over to Gary Brown, complete. As he keeps his feet moving, breaks the tackle, he's at the 10. And a five, and he gets taken out, and that's actually Tom Green now near side. And Tom Green doing a great job of not stopping after he got wrapped up. Yeah, again, I, uh, earlier in the season, I compared him to Torrey Holt there, and that's a Torrey Holt type of play right there, able to just 
be that reliable receiver that he is and uh, get down inside the five yard line. Goal line offense here for California as Keir in the gun. Keir handing it off up the middle and Jalen Bell keeps his feet moving and gets about three yards on the carry. And Jalen Bell with some great second effort, Dylan. Yeah, Jalen Bell able to keep his feet moving as they teach you. He looked like he stopped dead in the water and he said, no, I want to try to get in the end zone there. And he's almost crawling his way in. Uh, great effort there by Jalen Bell. As Keir in the gun. Changing up some things, uh, some deep uh, offensive coverage here. Two sidecars as he hands it off to Jalen Bell. Bell pushing himself forward, getting to the one yard line, maybe even closer to the goal line. As this is gonna be third and goal from the one. It's usually a spot where we see John Franklin the third come in, but they decide to go with Jalen Bell as now John Franklin is coming into the ball game. But uh, we've known Franklin to be the goal line back this season for California. And they tried to use Jalen Bell there those first two plays. And now it's a uh, third down and goal here. Yeah, John Franklin, that power back for California just goes right through the uh, defensive line as it's goal line offense and defense for both teams here. It's Kier's in the pistol. Kier handing off to John Franklin. Franklin has an easy hole to the end zone. And just like that, California scores six points. Yeah, that goal line formation there for California works yet again. John Franklin the third able to go in untouched for his first score of the day, putting California up six to nothing. Man, I think Jalen Bell could have even run that in. I mean, didn't need John Franklin for that one. Good for him to get a touchdown. But it was just a wide open hole for him to go through. Didn't even have to use his power. As William Brazil on the kick, the extra point. And we have some offsides. It looked like number 97, Eric Condren, the redshirt senior, kind of lost his balance and fell through the line. Yeah, tried to pull a fast one there and uh, <laughs> jumped off sides. See what California decides to do. It looks like they're going to stick with the kick here. Yeah, they're just going to let William Brazil kick it again here. I know in high school we'd be going for that one right now, but uh, smart. Safe play called by, by Gary Dunn. As William Brazil on the kick, the extra point. His kick is up, and it is good. So the score now with 3.27 to go in the first quarter. California leads it 7 to nothing. You're watching Vulcan football right here on CU TV. CU TV's high school football game of the week. Spring Doe at Jeff Morgan. Avella at California. Bell Vernon at Ringgold. Greensburg Central Catholic at Charleroi. Waynesburg at South Moreland. Baldwin at Connellsville. Beth Center at Brownsville. Frazier at Bentworth. Bishop Canavan at Carmichael. The longest running high school coverage in Southwestern PA is on CU TV. And welcome back to Adamson Standing for the PSAC Football Championship here. California leading 7-0 and a great drive down the field, Dylan. Yeah, great drive by this California offense. Set up by a big defensive hold. But here we take a look at John Franklin III running in untouched there is with California's goal line package in. Put a couple extra offensive linemen in, and that's all they needed there to get six points up on the board. As Kutztown coming back on offense, their offense had 22 rushing yards and 42 passing yards for 11 plays and 64 yards total offense. However, California on both their drives, 21 rushing yards, 71 passing yards for 15 plays and 92 yards of total offense. And those passing plays were Gary Brown and Tom Green with yards after the catch. Not too many deep balls, but they're able to really uh, take it into their own hands and uh, run it on their own and pick up big gains on the plays. Three different receivers here lined up for Kutztown. A different kick, kicking return formation. 
as William Brazil kicks it off. It's a high kick to the goal line and is returnable here. As Kutztown is Craig Reynolds getting the ball to the 17 yard line. And you see there number 41, Ryan McCauley with a hit. Yeah, Ryan McCauley really excited after that big hit. But as now we take a look at the PSAC East standings here. Kutztown, after starting out 0-3 on the season in uh, non-conference play, able to fight back and uh, go 7-0 and on the season, beating perennial PSAC East powerhouses Bloomsburg and Shippersburg on the season and uh, end up having a great year. Man, all three losses for Kutztown came from PSAC West teams. Yeah, they, they, they lost to uh, Assumption as well yeah. there early on in the season, which is we're, now we're talking about them possibly making the playoffs now. As Kutztown in the shotgun formation here with Craig DeGalbo, Colin DeGalbo, excuse me, as Reynolds running up the middle of the field. Actually, that's James Wah Jr. from Whitehall, PA, getting about five on the play. Yeah, they bring in another running back here. It looks like a little speedier back there in uh, James Waugh Jr. Able to uh, pick up seven yards up the middle here on this California defense. As DeGalbo going to be in the shotgun, looks like. Second and three for the Golden Bears. And trying to get in the jump off sides, no one moving. Trips to the far side for Kutztown. As DeGalbo handing it off to Wah. As Wah getting about two yards and then three on the play. So third and one coming up for the Golden Bears here. Yeah, Wah Jr. Definitely a little more of a speedier back opposed to Reynolds. And uh, looks like if California isn't able to keep him contained, he could uh, break a big run. He seems like a very shifty fast back. Craig Reynolds coming in now for the Golden Bears as the running back. Again, trips to the far side, no receivers to the near side. As the goal boat in the gun. One yard to go for them. Two minutes on the clock as we're gonna have a false start here. And number 63, Skylar Pencheri. Again, false start for him. He just ran right past the defensive line. Yeah, he did. Uh, just another mental mistake there by Kutztown. They can't afford that against this California team. It's third and seven now, I believe, for the Golden Bears. As it's a stack look here for the Golden Bears with the wide receivers, one right in front and back of each other. As again, we're gonna have another false start, I believe, Dylan. Yeah, they cannot afford these mental mistakes here. And a full start here by Kutztown. And that'll push them back past the stick. Still third down. It's going to be third and 11 now. And you got to think, they like that hard count, Dylan. And some of the offensive linemen might not be realizing that he's going to call the, the hard count, and they're jumping off sides. Yeah, that start. has a lot to do with this tough California defensive line. They're they're trying to get in the head of the offensive line and it's been working so far. The Galbo empty set here. Five wide receivers now as Reynolds is one of the receivers. As the breaking through the line are the Vulcans. And you can just see the offensive line just stand and look as the entire defensive line pummels Colin DeGalbo. That whole defensive line was able to break through on that one. Not a single guy left being blocked. As you see the whole offensive line of Kutztown kind of looking back and saying how we messed that one up. And uh, great job there by California. As he punted from his own end zone, his returnable to by Gary Brown. Gary Brown from the 50-yard line and with his quick speed getting the ball to the 37-yard line, giving California great field position. But looking here, California's Winning ways in the West here. How the West was won. California 7-0, 9-0 overall. And they're right now the best team in the West and right now in the conference for that matter. Yeah, they are the tough PSAC West with four teams over 500, which is great in terms of regional rankings. And three teams ranked in the top 25 is Edinburgh and IUP have only lost IUP lost to California, and Edinburgh's only two losses came to IUP and California, so tough three-headed monster there in the PSAC West. 
Kier. Play action. Over the middle to Gary Brown on a quick slant pattern. And he gets the ball to the 31-yard line, about a gain of six. And he was hit very hard on that play by number 36, Cox Cohen there, the defensive back. But Gary Brown able to hang on to that one. A nice, strong catch there as he comes off the play here, maybe a little shaken up after that one. As Kier going to be in the shotgun, second and four. We'll see if they take a play here, 10 seconds on the clock. As Michael Kier. Takes a snap, looking to pass, screen pass over to Tom Green. Green has a hole. He loses the football, and Tom Green's ball is going to go out of bounds at the one-yard line. And that's a break for the Vulcans. That is a huge break for the Vulcans. That could have been a touchback there. Actually, yeah, but it was able to get out of bounds at the one-yard line. What a big break for California. That, that, that gives them the ball at the goal line. It... it they're gonna have to take a timeout here. They're gonna take. They're gonna look at this again. They're gonna mark it where the ball was fumbled, and we're gonna take a break now. That's the end of the quarter. Uh, so seven to nothing here at the end of one. Stay tuned for the second quarter here at the BSAC Football Championships on CU TV. TV News Center is California University of Pennsylvania's award-winning student television newscast. Your source for live, local, late-breaking news. Forecasts from the Cal U Weather Center. The region's latest entertainment news. Balkan sports highlights and regional scoreboards with television news coverage you can't get anywhere else. Watch it live Thursdays on CU TV and on demand. CU TV News Center, online all the time. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium here as we see a crazy play to end the first quarter, Dylan. Michael Kier throws a pass to Tom Green. He catches it, and then he just he fumbles it right here off his own leg, and it goes out of bounds at the goal line. Now, what do you think the call should be here? Well, I understand their call. They're, they're calling it down where he fumbled the ball, but the way I look at it, it's one of those football rules that just one of those old-time rules that they kept, kept around, but... If that ball was kicked the other way and went out of bounds, if the other team had possession of it, they would get the ball there. So just kind of it kind of hurts the offense in that situation where they they don't get the ball where the fumble was, but the defense could have got it wherever it went to. So uh, tough break there, but actually a great break for California as it wasn't recovered there by Kutztown. Yeah, and it wasn't a touchback either because if it went in the goal line, the end zone and out, it's a touchback. So California stays with possession at the 19-yard line in the red zone. As Keir looking to pass. And it's going to become incomplete. He almost had that. And it's looking like Keir's throws just aren't the same today. I don't know. Something about it, Dylan. Yeah, it definitely appears to be that way. Maybe the cold air. Not a lot of wind here today. So uh, possibly just trying to get adapted to the cold weather. This is definitely the coldest weather. California has played it in all season long, so uh, look for uh, quarterback Michael Keir to get adjusted to that because he's played a couple seasons late into the winter, into the fall here as a backup quarterback, so he's gotten some throws in that type of situation, just has to get used to it. As Keir going to be in the gun, setting a man in motion is Smory. As he hands it off to Grissom, Grissom getting wrapped up immediately Grissom there the by Kutztown's Williams. Number two, Kenny Williams. If Kenny Williams wasn't able to make that tackle, Nick Grissom may have been able to score there, had a hole, but a nice stop there by Williams. As Keir in the gun. Third and seven for the Vulcans. As he's in the shotgun with Grissom as a sidecar, three receivers split out to the far side. As Keir waiting. Takes the snap, throws it over the middle, and it's going to be incomplete again. Underthrown. Yeah, Michael Keir is not his usual self here today. 
Had a little pressure on that one. Had to get rid of that one quick, but again, not the same Michael Kier we're used to seeing, and now William Brazil is out to uh, kick a, a field goal here. Brazil, Brazil able to three kick points. some pretty good field goals here. He won the game against IUP here. 33-yard attempt for William Brazil on a little a yard about inside the right hash. As Brazil takes the kick, and this one is no good, wide left. And it looked good from here, but he misses that one, Dylan. Yes, he does, and another big break there for Kutztown as William Brazil, a sure-handed, sure-footed kicker, you could say there for California, which all this field goals he's missed so far this season have been wide left, so uh, maybe something about the way he just follows through on his kicks causing him to miss those. Seven and nothing to score here is taking a look at the replay and it does go wide left. Maybe just overcompensated that one. And that's the second kick of the game that's been missed that direction, Dylan, as Kutztown missed one there going that way. Yes, they have. Maybe the wind is a bigger factor. We're up here in the top of the stands and it's not too bad here. I mean, it's a little breezy, but the flags aren't even moving up here. And you can't see many of the flags moving on the goalpost either, but Colin DeGalbo taking the snap here, looking to pass. And it's gonna be incomplete, overthrown to Kellen Williams, the senior from Chambersburg, PA. Yeah, a little, a little wide to the outside there. Second down. And uh, Jordan Lardani able to get his hands up and affected that throw. As there's 14.09 here in the second quarter. DeGalbo in the gun. Doubles look here for the receivers. As there's 15 on the play clock. And he keeps it himself as DeGalbo getting about five yards on the carry. DeGalbo yeah, in the keep. Tried to, tried to fake him out that he's going to throw that one, but it looked like he was keeping that one all Brad along the there. Start. And uh, another Game great job four. by California's defense uh, holding, holding DeGalbo here. As it's third and six for the Golden Bears. DeGalbo. In the gun, Craig Reynolds is the sidecar to the near side. As he moves him over to the far side now, 10 seconds on the play clock. DeGalbo looking to pass, some pressure coming and he is hit hard and it's incomplete. And DeGalbo getting up there, got his bell rung pretty hard by California's defense again. Yeah, Cameron Tarver is having himself a game here, shooting in on this one. Sure, a lot of acceleration there and flying into Del Gabo. So again, Cameron Tarver doing a great job here. Another punt coming for the Golden Bears as it's fourth and six. As Aaron Terry, Gary Brown are back to receive. California almost blocks it again. The collective ooh from the crowd, as you may have heard, is Aaron Terry. Takes a fair catch at the 47 yard line. California in the AFCA coaches poll. They're number six, Shepard number three, LIU Post 10, and IUP, the only other team from the PSAC number ranked at 11, and then Assumption 15 and Fairmont State number 22. All of those are in Super Region 1. Yeah, and all those teams have a great shot of making the, uh, the playoffs come tomorrow. So now we have a score update on the Assumption LIU post game. It is now Assumption 9, LIU post 7. And those are always, like we said, always known as those tough battling out games there between those two teams. Yeah, definitely. And that's a game we want to keep an eye on because, again, that's for the region there. And basically, if you don't know, the Super Region 1 has a bunch of different teams. Seven teams uh, play. There are three different conferences, MEC, PSAC, and any 10 and NCAA, excuse me, so four teams. And the selection show is this Sunday at 5 p.m. on the NCAA.com uh, on their website. Uh, go find their video. And you can watch and see how the bracket's gonna look for the Super Region 1 tournament. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll, I know we will be watching. I know the Cowboys and the Steelers play Sunday, but also be keeping an eye on that. And uh, definitely some big implications because 
being back from Central West Virginia, Fairmont State is a team I'd like to go see. And if we were able to get the bye week California is, I could uh, go see them play, which California may end up be playing later on down the road. Yeah, and if you, California stays number one, they get the bye. And they will play the second week, which is during Thanksgiving break. It's that good, uh, not good. It's that Saturday after Black Friday. As Michael Keir going to take over on offense here at the 46-yard line. As Keir takes the snap, gives it off to Jay, uh, excuse me, Nick Brissom, and he gets the ball to the 50-yard line. Gain of four on the play. And Nick Grissom again shooting through the hole there. Little pistol formation by California, and uh, we've seen that formation work big for them this season and uh, open up some big holes for Nick Grissom. Second down and six for the Vulcans. As he sends a man in motion, there is McCauley. Now, Hakir, play action. As he airs it out to Gary Brown, and Gary Brown cuts up the middle of the field and gets tackled at the 35-yard line and by Joey Ruggiero. As Gary Brown done a great job coming back for that ball. Yeah, Michael Keir there with a tough read. Looked like he was trying to get the ball to Paul, Paul Butler. As that's who his intended target was, but Gary Brown sprang open after Paul Butler was covered, and uh, Michael Keir doing a great job Pressure in his face completing that ball. Yeah, if Michael Keir wasn't able to get that ball off in time, he would have been sacked and hit hard as there were two guys coming from Kutztown. As it's first down and 10 from the 35-yard line in Kutztown territory. Shotgun look here for Michael Keir. Again, two tight ends as he's looking to pass. Keir airing it deep down the field to the end zone to Gary Brown. Gary Brown is going to be incomplete, underthrown again. And Kutztown's number 36 wanted a pass interference call. Key Cox Cohen wanted a pass interference call against Gary Brown. And that's just one where they ran out of room there. Michael Keir had to keep that one in bounds and uh, tried to give his receiver a shot. But Cohen is doing a great job defending Gary Brown on those deep balls. And he's doing a really good job of, you know, it's one on one covered basically. And he's keeping pace. And that's causing uh, Michael Keir not to be able to throw de deep and make Gary Brown uh, catch the ball. And it's second down and 10 now for the Vulcans. As Keir with five on the play clock, hands it off to Grissom. Grissom finds a hole, he's at the 30 yard line. And he's gonna get taken down at the 25. And a great hit there by Kenny Williams and Concha Hawkins. Yeah, that was a great hit there. But Nick Grissom, again, off the tackle. We've seen that run many times this season. And a nice tackle there, able to bring down Nick Grissom. That was a beautiful form tackle by Kenny Williams. Yes, it was, and uh, that's how they teach you. Especially nowadays, that's a perfect form for a, a tackle here. And don't go for the big hit. Just try to wrap him up by the legs. And did a great job there with Kenny Williams. But California gets a good first down here, first and 10 from the 24. Kieran the pistol hands it off to Grissom. Grissom cutting it back up the middle of the field and getting the ball to the 16-yard line, it looks like. So gain of nine. Yeah, Nick Grissom, another great season for him after having to sit out last season. Coming into this game with 844 yards, rushing nine touchdowns and close to six yards per carry. That's what you ask for from a running back. As Keir in the pistol. Second and two as Grissom getting the ball to about a one yard gain there. Yeah, not a lot of running room there. Interior this offensive line, a veteran offensive line, numerous seniors all across the front there, but uh, setting up a third down and short here. Look for California to maybe hit the ground again or maybe look in the flat as they've done so many times to Paul Butler. That, could be who Michael Keir's looking at here. I may look for Garrett Brown on a quick slant. He is kind of a little farther out, so he has some room to make that slant pattern. As Keir gonna be in the shotgun here, as Grissom is the side guard of the far side. Keir handing it off up the middle of Grissom. Grissom plowing his way across the 15 yard line. Now in, it's gonna be a first down at the 13 yard line. And Nick Grissom again able to, what do you, the, Got to win there with the big boys there and uh, pick up the first down. So first and 10 now 
from the 13. Pistol look here for Kier now. And they're driving down the field. He makes an audible here. As Kier has 12 on the play clock, handing it off. Play action now. And he breaks away from the tackle. Kier going to keep it himself and is going to run out of bounds at a gain of about two yards. And what a job by Kier to shake away that sack that was almost happening. Yeah, a frustrating start here early on, and he made a great play there to elude the rush there. Faked him out with the pump fake. That's what they teach you, and uh, he's able to make something out of nothing there and pick up a few yards on the play. Yeah, Ronnie Tomasetti was unblocked on the play and gave Kier a run for his money there. Tomasetti's been been in the backfield a couple times today, so California needs to look to him to try to stop him. And it's second down and nine for the Vulcans. Kier in the gun, looking to pass. Kier, plenty of time, airing it to the end zone, and that is complete in the back of the end zone for Gary Brown. Gary Brown again with a great catch there, another touchdown on the season. That makes his 17th touchdown here on this season in the last game here and he's done a great job all season long with that exact pattern there right across the middle right in the back of the end zone we've seen that a lot of times this year again one of the toughest guys to stop in the whole country as Brazil's kick is up and that one is good so the Vulcans take a 14 to nothing lead here with nine minutes and nine seconds to go here in the first half stay tuned for more action at the PSAC championships here on CUTV back for its third season. With more live episodes. And brand new games. With host, Stephen Ruffing. It's Welcome back to Adamson Stadium here as the California Vulcans lead at 14 and nothing off a beautiful pass from Michael Keir into the back of the end zone to Gary Brown. As you take a look at the replay here, Dylan. Yeah, Gary Brown able to find his way open there. Michael Keir able to find him there in the back of the end zone on a little post pattern. And Gary Brown yet again coming into this game with 16 touchdowns and that's his 17th. Averaging 8.3 yards per catch, which is incredible for Division II football. And then 1,116 yards, which he has already improved on in this game. So he's just, yet again, all the NFL scouts are looking at him. Almost 20 teams have been here looking at him for at, at practices and stuff. So he teams definitely have their eyes on him. He's one of the top prospects in Division II football. So uh, we're lucky to have him here in California. And in California, 29 plays for 167 yards already, total offense. 116 passing yards and 51 rushing yards as Brazil's kick is a booming one to the end zone. And is returnable here. As he breaks a hole and gets to the 30 yard line. Again, Craig Reynolds doing a great job there as you look at the PSAC schedule today. Yeah, all the, uh, the crossover games here today, Besides for the uh, PSAC championship, we a couple good games there. Lock Haven emerging here should be a very well contested game. Indiana and Bloomsburg, when most years that may be the PSAC championship game, and uh, Bloomsburg a little down this year. But again, I Indiana out without their quarterback there, so uh, could be a good game. It really could be a good game, and it'd be big regionally if IUP were to lose that game to Bloomsburg, as there's. Trips to the near side for DeGalbo. DeGalbo play action. Has to scramble here. He's got no one to throw it to and just runs out of bounds for a gain of about a yard maybe. And it looks like they're actually going to spot him with no gain. No gain on the play. Second down. 
Yeah, great job again. Cameron Tarver running him out of bounds there. Been all over the field here. And uh, so that sets up a second down and long. So second down and 10 now from the 30 yard line. As Tagalbo in the gun. As there's two receivers on either side here. Five on the play clock. Now one. DeGalbo just getting the snap off. Screen pass complete. And he's going to get wrapped up there at the 33 yard line. Hollander with and the that reception. was Hollander with the reception. Stop Nathan by Hollander. Terry. Aaron Terry with a nice stop there. The safety for Cal. Aaron Terry with a beautiful stop there. Great tackle and open field. That's what they ask you to do in the, as a defensive back, and he's just able to throw him down. Great stop there by Aaron Terry. 30, third and six here as DeGalbo in the gun. Empty set for him. As DeGalbo takes a snap, looking to pass. Complete there to Reynolds. Reynolds keeps his feet. And he's going to get taken out of bounds at the 50-yard line. And a late flag coming by the far judge there, the side judge. And I'm going to say he's maybe a, a late hit. And maybe against Kutztown, but I'm, I'm going to think it's against California. And that's what it looks like. It is. See what they call here. Personal foul, face mask against California. Personal Take a look at that here on the replay. Couldn't quite see that one, but he's able to break through Vondell Bell's tackle there. And he's off to the races and then. Yep, right there. You got he grabbed the side of the six mask. Yeah, it also looked like both guys grabbed their yeah. face mask both there. So a tough call. Referee only saw one of them, and that's all you gotta see. And yep. But that's the first penalty here on California yeah. so far in this game. So they're doing what you said, limit yep. penalties right now. Yeah, definitely keep him with that key to victory here. Except that was one penalty for 15 yards, so <laughs> kind of a bad penalty here. We're getting them to the their California territory on the 35-yard line is DeGalbo. Looking to go deep down the field. This one is short and it is incomplete. And that was almost intercepted by Aaron Terry. It's actually Edwards there for California, almost intercepting that ball after coming back after being sidelined for a couple weeks with injury, and he jumped up and uh Almost got that one, but almost jumped a little too soon and uh, almost gave up a big play there. Definitely, the second down and 10 here was 7.16 to go in the first half. As you hear the lovely sounds of college football marching bands here, Kutztown brought their band, which is awesome to see. As DeGabo hands it off to Reynolds. Reynolds breaking to the outside, got some room to run, but he's gonna get wrapped up and taken down at the 33 yard line. Aaron Terry is one of the best tacklers on this California team, able to tackle a running back there in open space. It's all you ask for from a defensive back, actually more than what you ask for from a defensive back, and he's just able to throw him down there. Seen that a lot of times today, and seen that his whole career here with California. It's third and seven for the California Vulcans, uh, Vulcans on defense, puts down on offense. As DeGalbo, empty set. Three receivers to the near side, two to the far. As DeGalbo takes the pass, look, looking to pass and throws it incomplete and a big hit there. Looking for 86, Troy Parton from Salisbury High School. Yeah, Parton there almost had that one, but Luke Rapcheck made a nice hit on him, making it unable for him to bring down the catch. So Luke Rapcheck again, I like to call him during the week there, the anchor for California's defense. The guy in the middle that you need day in and day out to lead the defense, and he's just done a great job all season long. That he has, and DeGalbo staying out on the field here. Same look, shotgun here. As DeGalbo looking to pass. Tipped at the line, incomplete, and it's a turnover on downs. Great stop there by the defensive line. This defense has come to play today. Outshining the offense here early on. One of the best defenses in Division II football. And last year, I'm not sure you could have even imagined to say that. Much improved this season. Coach Mike Craig doing a great job and uh, just shutting down as we look at the California schedule all season long. The most points they've given up was 28 to a tough IUP team. 
Yeah, and I mean, that was a, a very tough team with Lenny Williams and Chris Temple and a few other guys for them. But this California team won it on a field goal, and it's some good defensive stops there. As Michael Keir in the pistol look. Handing it off to Jimmy Wheeler, I believe. As he gets the ball to the, about a gain of four here. And it does appear First to down be players down. an injury, yes. But Jimmy Wheeler, a guy we haven't seen a lot all season. We were talking about last week on radio that he is a guy that California could really look to come playoff time. He's a quick back. Not too many guys in this whole country could run with him. So if you're able to get him the ball in space, it just makes it he, – he's that fourth option now at the running back position for California that most teams struggle to have one or two options. And California's able to have four legitimate options at running back. And we saw Jimmy Wheeler a lot last year uh, because uh, Grissom was injured and we had a red shirt. But Jimmy Wheeler was that speedy back. And once he found that hole and he got to the outside, look out. He could break it. And he did for a, a very big gains last year. And I remember being on the sideline last season, and every time he got the ball in the kickoff, everybody in the whole sideline just kind of waited and tried to see if he was able to make a play. Everybody had their eyes on him. He's always the guy, if you're in space, especially on kickoff returns and sweep plays and plays to the outside, he's a guy that can break it nine times out of ten. An injured player there was Zach Delp, the senior linebacker from Whitehall, PA. But talking about Jimmy Wheeler, I mean, we were watching him in the pregame here with the huddle and the pregame pump up, basically. And everyone's in the huddle, like, going up and down. And Jimmy Wheeler's just running around. He's running around in a circle and he's smacking people in the helmet and, and shoulder pads. And he's just having a great time out there. Yeah, and he's one of the most excited guys on this California team. He's always amped up. As Michael Keir, second and six in the pistol look. As it's 5.50 to go here in the first half. Keir handing off to Wheeler. Wheeler getting wrapped up immediately there. And that looked like that was 97. No. That was Condren on the play. Yeah, that was Eric Condren there, number 97, with a huge hit there on Jimmy Wheeler. Pummeled him backwards. And uh, if it wasn't for California's lineman being there, Jimmy Wheeler may have went back a couple yards there. He got absolutely leveled on that one. Jimmy Wheeler's not the biggest guy on the field either. And, and Condren is six foot, 265 pounds. Jimmy Wheeler's 5'8", 175. Yeah. He's going to go flying. <laughs> yeah, he is. As it's third down and nine for the Vulcans here with Michael Keir. Keir looking to pass. Plenty of time as he airs it off there to Jalen Bell. Bell, stiff arms and Gets the ball to the 45-yard line with some extra effort. And that's a Vulcans first down now. And that's a pass to the running back position that Michael Keir's done great all season long, looking through his progression downfield and come back down to his running back, Jalen Bell. Smart, smart play there by Michael Keir. Shotgun look again for Keir. Doubles for the wide receivers. Jalen Bell, the side guard of the far side. Trying to get him to go off sides and no one's moving as looks like uh, Kutztown going with that 4-3 set. As play action, under some pressure goes to Gary Brown. Gary Brown's got to make a move here, and he keeps on his feet, and Gary Brown gets the ball inside the, the Kutztown territory at the 43-yard line. Again, that's Gary Brown right there. Looks like he's down, and he's just able to keep his feet moving, just so elusive and just... I, I, I can't even use all the words in the dictionary to describe him sometimes. He's just all you ask for at the receiver position. And Gary Brown, he got tackled actually by the guy that wrapped him up first. He did enough, the guy who tackled him did enough to stop him, slow him down, and then trip him up later. I think there just needs to be a new adjective called Gary Brown, and that's all you need to say. As Keir handing it off to Bell, and Jalen Bell's going to get about a yard on the carry. So second down here for the Vulcans. The Vulcans offense is starting to get their groove, starting to get in their rhythm that we've been accustomed, accustomed to seeing all season long. And when that starts happening, it makes it tough on defenses. And uh, if, if once they start getting rolling, it's tough to stop them. As second down and nine for California. Here, going to change up some of the play here. And 
as Kier takes the snap, handing off to Jalen Bell. Bell breaking some tackles here, going right through the defense and getting the ball to the 29-yard line. And he's a guy that's elusive and can also lower the shoulder here. You see at the end of this run, Jalen Bell lowers his shoulder and that makes it tough on defensive backs. When you have to get a running back that's coming at you full speed and then lowers First his shoulder, from the 28. you start to feel that when he hits you and uh, it's a tough feeling. That was a perfect deke at the line of scrimmage to go look like he's going left and then break it back to the right. Getting them the first down here, under three minutes to go. Kier, pass to Gary Brown. Brown, again, juking some players there, getting the ball to the 25 yard line. Yeah, with receiver Jordan Dangers out here, when they get this doubles look for California, they have to find that fourth receiver, and it's usually Jordan Dandridge, and now it's Chad Livingston out there at the receiver position, so great for him. A freshman receiver getting some playing time here. Yeah, freshman from Laurel Highlands. Three receivers here for Michael Keir in the Vulcans offense. Gary some, Brown, the near side receiver. Someone we haven't heard the name called yet is the Luke Smorey, so maybe look for him to try to get open here on this one. Keir, I'll go into Gary Brown, and this one is complete but out of bounds. And Gary Brown doesn't like that call, but he gets about two Brown yards on the, the on the catch. What a catch there by Gary Brown. Looked like that could have, ball could have been batted down, but his strong hands able to bring that one down. Two, third down As the wind five. picking up here, Dylan. And it looked like his toe might have been on the line. Yeah, you see up on the big board there. But as you said, yeah, that wind is coming right across the field, right through your screen almost. So uh, Definitely little, blowing to right the left, left. Yeah, like the, the kicks have been missing. As we're going to have a timeout called by Kutztown here with a minute and 49 and a third and five for the Vulcans. Timeout, They're taking their first timeout. And if you're just joining us, here's some highlights from this first half. And we're going to start with a missed kick by Kutztown. Yeah, after California's first drive stalled out, Kutztown able to drive the ball down and almost put some points on the board, but weren't able to. And then California comes storming back all the way down the field with uh, John Frank in the third coming in, unblocked into that one. And then another missed field goal, this time by William Brazil, a very reliable kicker for California. And then California just started rolling there on offense. The Best connection you can ask for there with Gary Brown in the back of the end zone, wide open. And then just California just done a great job this season. And as you see their huddle there, Coach Gary Dunn has just done a fantastic job leading this team back. The, the attitude is way different this year than it has been in years past. And I think that's well known by everyone watching this team. Coach Gary Dunn has just done a fantastic job leading them and getting them prepared week in and week out. Well, you know, we watched a documentary done by uh, Cal U and about this football team, and I think it was the right time to do it. After you know, things that have happened in the past, getting a new head coach now, it was the right time to do a documentary about this football team. And what a group of guys this is. I mean, you heard the, the whole documentary was about playing in six seconds. You know, we play for the next six seconds of every drive. Every drive about six seconds long, four to six seconds. And that's how Coach Gary Dunn coaches them. And, you know, Nick, uh, Taylor Nickether said in that documentary that the last year the team was a team, but it was divided. This year is a team, and it's a family. And that's definitely big, especially when you get down into playoff time now. You're on weeks 15 and 14, and later on in the season you have to have that team put together like a family. And Jalen Bell getting about a yard on the carry. So it's going to be fourth down here. And we'll see if William Brazil comes on to kick it. It looks like they are calling an offensive play here for California. They appear to be going for this one. Yeah, it's in that weird spot, the right hash. And the wind is blowing right to left. So they're going to go for it here. Fourth and four with a minute and 20 to go in the first half. As Kier. Takes the snap, looking to pass. Going into the end zone, Luke Smorey, and there he is. Luke Smorey gets the touchdown for the California Vulcans. What a beautiful throw there by Michael Keir. Pressure into his face. It drops an absolute dime there to Luke Smorey in the front corner of the end zone. You take a look at the replay there. Michael Keir, pressure coming in his face. 
and he's able to drop the ball perfectly right in the basket there to Luke Smory. We said we haven't heard his name all day, and right there he is with a big touchdown grab. Yeah, beautiful right in the bread basket there of Luke Smory. As we're looking for some of the replays on the video board by Sports Fever. And William Brazil on the kick, the extra point. His kick is up, and it is good. So the California Vulcans lead it now. 21 to nothing here with 1.12 to go in the first half. Stay tuned for the rest of the first half in the PSAC Championships here on CUTV. The longest student produced show on CUTV. is back with highlights and analysis, scores and standings, and more. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium here, the location for the PSAC Championships. Kutztown trailing here 21 to nothing. Say the number six California Vulcans and Dylan break down this beautiful touchdown pass to Luke Smory. Yeah, corner out there by Luke Smory. And it's kind of a smash pattern there by the whole receivers. And Luke Smory able to make a beautiful catch. But I think that one all has to go to the throw by Michael Keir. Pressure coming into his face where you have to put the ball perfectly there to keep him in balance, keeping him away from the defender. And uh, Michael Keir was able to do that. And that just shows the maturity that he has grown into this whole season. As we take a look at the uh, scores again, well, LIU Post takes the lead 13 to 9 over Assumption with 6.54 to go in the first quarter, Dylan. Yeah, that's a, that's a score we're going to be watching all day because they're going to have a better record than California. One more win on their season if they're able to pick up that win. So something we're watching very carefully. As this kick goes to the five-yard line and is returnable. And he gets to the 20-yard line. And a minute and seven to go here for Kutztown as you see Kutztown's schedule here. They lost to Assumption, who again is playing in the NET championship game, 45-21. to 21. And then he lost to Mercer, the team who California just demolished. Yeah, and that was a close game. And then California also, right, were able to beat Seton Hill pretty soundly, and they lost 44 to 22. But then they came, they came storming back, won a couple close games, got them going. You see that close game a couple weeks ago against Shippensburg, where they won the PSAC East on that game. So they're still doing a great job all season long. Degalba over the middle of the field, incomplete on a diving effort there and by number 86, Troy Parton. Second down. Yeah, diving effort there. Wasn't able to bring that ball in. Degalba has just been off a little bit today. We know he's known really for being able to be mobile and run around, but California's just done a great job stopping him. Minute three here, second and 10, as Degalba in the shotgun. Degalba looking to pass. As he gets hit as he throws, and this is going to be caught for about a five-yard gain, and Degalba bouncing right up after that hit. Yeah, definitely. Nice throw there with pressure, as you're saying. Able to find his man, and one of the first times we've seen that all game. Third down and four. As it's third down and four. And... Going to be DeGoblo here, third and four again. Under a minute now, 59.9 seconds. Big defensive stand here for California. There's 10 on the play clock as he takes a snap, looking to pass. It's going to be incomplete, almost intercepted by Aaron Terry, just out of the hands of Troy Parton. And it looks like they may have to punt here, Dylan, and that gives California the ball back. With, a, with lot of time a lot of time left, yeah. Yeah, a lot of time left on that clock, and we know this offense doesn't need much. And especially with that guy that's going back to return this kick there, Gary Brown, you're not going to need much time at all to move the ball down. <laughs> Downtown Gary Brown, as we like to say here. Maybe see if he can. You know, Aaron Terry's another great punter. Don't discredit him. 
We've seen him take punts back uh, before, and they are going to punt it to Aaron Terry. And Aaron Terry fields it and has some room to run. Aaron Terry at the 50. Aaron Terry getting crunched at the 45-yard line, trying to break something through. Yeah, he was letting that contact. He, he wanted that contact there. He ran right into him there. But again, they're setting up great field position. They have the ball here at the 44-yard line. They look to do some stuff here with 45 seconds left on the clock. If Aaron Terry got through that, it was a touchdown. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the last guys they had to defend him. But they do have three timeouts left. Haven't used a timeout left. And haven't used a timeout this whole first half. So uh, look for them to really try to put some points here up, more points up on the board here. 45 seconds on the clock for the Vulcans as Kier in the shotgun, three receivers to the far side. Kier looking to pass. Airing it over the middle, and that one's complete to Tom Green. And that's a big reception and a first down here, stopping the clock. Yeah, look for California. They're, going, they're not going to use these timeouts. They need to practice situations like this where they don't have those timeouts in their bank. Skier gun in the shotgun, looking to pass. Under a lot of pressure. He breaks out of it. There's a flag here. This is coming back as there was some holding from behind. By it looks like number 57, Malik Washington. It actually looked like 67 there, Tyler Pearson. Uh, what's the holding there? Yeah, we'll see who this is on here. It's going to be a personal foul. Hands to the face against Kutztown. Wow. That's big. And that is big. And uh, he's trying yeah, to right see there. there. Yeah, he's His hands are right him. over him. Yeah, right there. It was right on, on his face, uh, face mask there. And that's a first and goal now for the California Vulcans. And that's it. First we said it all along. Running. California able to take advantage of these penalties a cuts, a cuts down. 26.2 seconds on the clock. First and goal from the eight. As California driving here off a big 15-yard penalty from the Golden Bears. You can't afford that against this California team. Not at all. Kier in the gun. Looking to pass. Kier going into the end zone. It is complete there. And everyone in front of us cheering as that one goes to number 88, I believe, Montel Britton. Now that's number 80, Chad 80, Livingston 80, there, Chad able Livingston. to make that catch. What a beautiful catch by the freshman, Chad Livingston. First touchdown of his career being a Vulcan. And what a pass to the back of the end zone. Credit to Chad Livingston making that catch. My apologies for not getting the name right right away. The 80, 80 and the 0 and 8 look a little alike. But and, yeah. and his parents are right in front of us cheering. They're all excited, making some phone calls, calling the family, letting them know <laughs> that their boy just uh, picked up a touchdown. As Chad Livingston gets the touchdown, the score now 28 to nothing with 22.8 seconds to go here in the first half. California leads it big over the Kutztown Golden Bears in the PSAC Championships on CUTV. Say preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. Playing Cal U's best music, 91.9 WCAL. WCAL. Power 92. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium as the California Vulcans lead 28 to nothing. You see Chad Livingston right there getting the touchdown, his first touchdown of his collegiate career, and it comes in the PSAC Championship. And we have his family here surrounding us up here, up top, and they're all excited about that one, able to get a touchdown. You can hear them, they're yelling for him. Uh, it's so exciting, a true freshman able to get a touchdown in the PSAC Championship. And as you said, this is nationally broadcast on ESPN3, so that's that's great for him. Uh, not too many true freshmen can say they've been able to do that. And, and you don't want to say that uh, it's a good thing, but Chad Livingston might not be playing in this game if Jordan Dandridge is not injured. 
And it, it's great for him that he's getting this time uh, to, to play in a championship game. Hopefully Jordan Dandridge gets better and get, gets well soon. But a great time to be alive for Chad Livingston. Yeah, it is. And we, were, we just mentioned that just a couple drives before that. As Kutz down with 20 seconds on the clock, taking a return, it's Craig Reynolds. Reynolds has a hole and a late flag coming here as he gets the ball to the 45-yard line. But this may be a block in the back against Kutztown. Yeah, and the penalty bug has bit Kutztown, and you cannot afford that. And now you really can't win. It's 28 to nothing here in the first half. It makes it tough on you. And 15.1 seconds on the clock here. And back to that touchdown grab. That was a great that was a great catch there in the back of the end zone. Not easy. Yeah, definitely not easy. And uh, he's a guy that California can look to. Luke Smorey's getting up there in age, not a senior yet. But uh, look for him with with uh, Gary Brown moving on next season, that uh, he could be a guy next season that could be a, a big threat for this California team. Holding against the Kutztown Golden Bears at the 24-yard line. That's a, and a personal foul. Personal against foul. California. Against so it looks like these are going to offset maybe. And then be first down. And they're going to put the ball at the 28-yard line. Yeah, I'm not sure where that penalty came against California. Maybe at the first end of the play right there. there, the late hit. Yes. Yep. And that's that's two unnecessary 15, two 15-yard penalties against California. We said they've been limiting their penalties, but they're they're having those 15-yarders and you can't you can't rack up too many of those, and those are the ones you want to get rid of if your coach is done. As there's a 15.1 seconds here you on the clock. You can afford a couple holdings and stuff like that because you understand those type of plays, but uh, you don't want to give up the 15 yarders. The Galbo in the gun. First and 10 from the 29 as he's looking to pass. As the Galbo under pressure. Not being able to get wrapped up, but he's going to get taken down at the 25-yard line, and this should end the half. That's Cam Tarver yet again, the veteran, both on the football field and as a Navy veteran. Again, day after Veterans Day, huge for him. And that's a big stop at the end of the first half with a sack on the play. This California defense has come to play here. You can see that on their score. They have not let up a point yet, 28 to nothing. The score here at the PSAC Championship game on CUTV. The longest student produced show on CUTV. Is back with highlights and analysis, scores and standings, and more. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Save preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. Vulcan Nation, playing Cal U's best music, 91.9 WCAL, WCAL, Power 92. Back for its third season. With more live episodes. And brand new games. With host Stephen Ruffing. It's the Multimedia Access Center is an open lab where California University students can work on an assignment, attend a workshop, print a document for class, or take advantage of a variety of services such as large format printing web development, and graphic design. Located in the renovated Natalie Student Center across from the Student Bookstore, the Mac Lab is also your home for OrgSync support and services. For hours of operation or for more information, stop by the Mac Lab, visit our website, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. Give away 
And welcome back to Addison Stadium, the site of the PSAC Championships here for football. Again, I'm Anthony D'Agostino, and then Dylan will be joining me shortly after he's done eating. And uh, so, it's so a minute 40 left to go here. California again up 28 to nothing. As we look at the halftime stats here, California rushing 77 yards, Kutztown rushing 25 yards, and passing 193 yards. Dylan, this is pretty big here in terms of, look at these stats for California, just unreal. Yeah, definitely, almost 200 more total yards than Kutztown here after the first half of play. But the big thing is first downs. They may have been able to get in their rhythm that we've been accustomed to seeing all year long, and that is paying off big time for California. Yeah, definitely as Looking at some of the highlights here, California has lots of highlights here, 28 to nothing, as Dylan break them down. Yeah, kind of a slow start for California. Kutztown was not able to convert there with that field goal that could have put them up three to nothing. And really, ever since then, California has just been rolling. They get the score with John Franklin there to make it seven to nothing, and then a missed field goal, their, their own there by William Brazil, normally, normally a kicker that can put it through. Then Michael Keir starts getting into his groove now after a slow start, and he finds Gary Brown again for his 17th touchdown on the season, and then he puts this ball right here, right on the money, a deal for dime, as they'd call it on ESPN, there to Luke Smory, and then the freshman, the true freshman receiver, Chad Livingston, Catches the ball, beautiful catch there in the back of the end zone, bringing it in and making it 28 to nothing before the half. What a half of football by this California team. Yeah, definitely. And uh, William Brazil's going to kick it off, but before we, uh, we cover the kickoff, got to mention the IP Crimson Hawks up 14 to 3 over Bloomsburg. Those two touchdowns come from Chris Temple, the running back, 102 yards rushing there. And, and Mike Petropola is playing quarterback for IEP, Lenny Williams is out for that game. Assumption at halftime is down nine to 16 over to LIU Post. And Notre Dame, Ohio is tied with West Virginia Wesleyan seven to seven. And Shepard's up 14 to nothing over Urbana. As Kutztown has a hole there at the 25 yard line, he goes. And another good return there for Kutztown. That was Craig Reynolds. Reynolds right now, probably their best, best athlete. Yeah, definitely. All over the field, split them out, put them in the backfield, and now we're turning kicks. But if you're Kutztown, if you want a chance to get back in this game, which we were talking to halftime, will be very tough for them. If they're wanting to get back in this game, they are going to have to get a score here. They're going to have to set the tone here in the second half. California has all the momentum. They're dictating the pace of play. If you're Kutztown, you have to turn that around. You have to get the momentum back in your favor. To go. Goblo. And he's at the shotgun here as he hands it off to Reynolds. Reynolds finds a hole up the middle, and there's a flag coming here as he gets past the 35 yard line for a first down with the flags at the 30 yard line, Dylan. Yeah, and as turnovers, I mean, those penalties for Kutztown, we talked about California being a problem. Kutztown hasn't been a problem this season. So uh, these have been big against Kutztown today. We'll see the penalty call here as the official showing them. It's a holding penalty against uh, Kutztown. So that'll be first and 20 now. As you check a look here, it should be on the left side of your screen right there. Yeah, holding like, outside of your jersey. Yeah, grab Cameron Tarver, who was a wrecking ball in the first half. Just uh, playing great with two tackles for loss in the first, first half. 16, but uh, the, the goal blow hasn't been getting going he's six for 16 only 68 yards and been sacked twice so uh look for him to try to get going here as the goal boat in the gun one sidecar is uh reynolds pressure coming thrown over the middle of the field and it's complete and a big hit there by arnold former junior but that's complete to number 82 kellen williams a senior from chambersburg yeah those are the passes that the goal boat wasn't able to complete in the first half, and what a beautiful catch there. And then Arnell Farmer Jr. with a big hit. Second down and four for the Golden Bears. As DeGalbo handing it off up to Reynolds. Reynolds, Reynolds finding the outside, getting thrown out of bounds at the 
four yard, 36 yard line, excuse me. That's good enough for a first down for the Golden Bears. Reynolds was able to do that because the receiver came in. You missed it just a little bit on that screen there, but he was able, the receiver was able to come back and crack back. First and 10 from the 35. Uh, safety Jordan Bowman that really sprang the outside and made it open there for uh, Reynolds to get, get downfield. First and 10 for the Golden Bears here. As DeGalbo in the gun, play action, throwing it across the field to number 19, Nathan Hollander, and Hollander gets across the 50-yard line to the 48, and he was stopped by Jordan Bowen on the play, but a good pass and catch there. And we're talking earlier on today that the safeties for California have been sure tacklers all season long, but they weren't able to get that tackle there. And uh, another big play, this Kutztown team, they needed a drive like this. They need to keep going here, here in the first drive of the second half. First and 10 from the 48, as he hands it off up to Reynolds to the far side, and gets taken down at the 45 yard line. Stop by a rap jack. There's some extracurricular activities going on. The team's a little frustrated. If you're Kutztown, you're very frustrated here. You, we're not happy with that first half of play. Injury timeout. Injury timeout here. A California player is down. I'm not sure who it is. Looks like maybe Vondell Bell, and that could be a big loss for this defense. He is a big cornerback. Not too many quarterbacks are quite as big as Vondell Bell is. But he's second down and eight here. We'll see if he can get up on his own power. Uh, Vondell is 6'4", 194 pounds. That is a big cornerback there for California. If he is down for any significant amount of time, that could be big. Hey, he's one of those guys that covers that left side of the field. And Dylan, you know, talk about uh, this game. It's going to be on CUTV Sports 1, our YouTube page. Uh, when we get a chance to upload it there, it's also going to be on CUTV's uh, cable channel uh, and tape delay. But... Uh, great, just a great thing if you're not in the area and you want to watch it uh, online anytime. Yeah, I know our families take advantage of that as well. Yeah, you're from West Virginia, and I'm from uh, Lancaster, PA. And uh, it was, uh, it's good for both of our, our families and uh, anyone else to, uh, to be able to watch it. And Vondell Bell smiling, walking off there. So looks like he should be able to be coming back uh, in a little bit. Yeah, that's a good sign for sure. We're talking about Shepard. They have a big receiver looking a little bit down down the field is probably the one of the tougher opponents California would end up facing in the playoffs, but they have a big receiver, probably one of the top five receivers in Division II football that uh, they would need a bigger guy like Vondell Bell to cover him. As DeGalbo in the gun. As he takes a snap, handing it off to Reynolds. Reynolds getting taken down for a gain of a yard after getting taken down at the 45-yard line. And again, some pushing and shoving after the play. But a nice stop there by California's defense, uh, setting them up for a third down and medium here. Third and seven for the Golden Bears. About 12.30 to go here in the third quarter. As DeGalbo in the gun. Doubles look for the wide receivers as Craig Reynolds is the sidecar to the near side as he's looking to pass. Throwing it over the middle of the field and it is complete there to his receiver. And that looks like it's gonna be good enough for a first down. Again, that was 86 Parton on the play. Yeah, Parton made a beautiful catch there. Not a lot of room for Delgado to complete that ball, but Parton was able to bring down that ball and uh, pick up a first down, keep this drive going. They haven't had a drive like this all game long, so look for them to keep this thing going. As DeGalbo in the gun, first and 10. And we have some movement up front here, and there's gonna be some laundry thrown on the field. I believe it's a false start, Dylan. Another penalty against, we've seen a lot of false starts for Kutztown in this game. Yeah, definitely as, again, maybe just some miscommunication at the line of the scrimmage offense. on when that hard count is gonna be. And I do like to run that play, kind of like California likes to run that hard count play to try to get them to jump off sides. Yeah, and I definitely think a lot of that has to do with California's defense just dictating the pace of play and uh, really enforcing their will on the offensive line at Kutztown. It gets in their head a little bit. The Galbo in the shotgun here first, uh, excuse me, 
yeah, first and 15 here. The scoreboard's wrong. As this is a screen pass and out of bounds off the hands of 86, Troy Parton. Yeah, that was just a great job by California's defense. It really disrupted that play. Delgabo didn't have much to do. Lardini did a nice job staying in between Delgabo and that receiver and made Delgabo have to scramble out of the pocket and kind of adjust his body, and he was not able to complete that ball. As second and 15 here. DeGalbo in the shotgun. As he takes the ball and hands it off to Reynolds. Reynolds cutting it upfield, getting to the Valdi line of scrimmage, but maybe a yard short, so it's going to be third and 11 for the Kutztown Golden Bears. Reynolds is starting to find those holes in this defense for California, as you can see here, a little zone, outside zone there, right off the tackle. And he was able to pick up around four or five on the play, which is all you ask for for plays like that. Third and 11 here. Third and 11 for Kutztown. As DeGalbo in the gun, five wide outs. As DeGalbo looking to pass, going over the middle of the field, and that's going to be tipped at the line, and it's going to be fourth down now. Cameron Tarver again. Not a guy we really talked about all season long, but Cameron Tarver has been making plays this entire game. This is a statement by him as a senior leader on this team that they're wanting, they're wanting to keep this thing rolling. They don't want to have any downfalls, no, no losses they shouldn't have had. They want to finish the season out, and – for all these guys, this is their first PSAC championship. This defense is definitely excited in this one. As it's fourth and 11, no punting here. DeGalbo is still on the field. A stack look by the receivers in a doubles formation. DeGalbo under pressure, and he's going to lose the ball. It's a fumble on the play. California picks it up at the 45-yard line, and we've seen that before, and Luke Krabchak picks it up. Luke Rapchak with some good hands again today. You know, he batted down a pass before, and now look at this. He gets the strip sack and the recovery himself. What a great job there by Luke Rapchak. Brings him down, and then, oh, he finds the ball right there for him. And as you'd say, Anthony, that's the leading receiver in California history right there. You had a mistake earlier on, but again, nice play by Luke Rapchak. And I'm telling you, I had to play. And, and I had Dylan, to play against him in high school, and he was a tough, tough kid. Dylan, got to mention here, the center for California, Taylor Nickenser, was named just today the Football Champion Scholar Award today for the PSAC, and that is great to hear. Yeah, that's great for him. That's, a, that's an award that uh, he can share, shares for a lifetime. As Nick Grissom getting no gain on the play, and, you know, D2 and an NCAA in general, you know, really hammers home this fact that you're at your scholars first, this athlete second. Stop. And Coach Dunn has done a great job of making sure that that's how this team is run. Yeah, if they, I know from in the spring, if you're missing classes, you would pay for it on the football field. And uh, that's a motto you have to have. Like you said, especially in Division Two, not all these guys are going to have a chance to play in the NFL. And uh, Nickenser just set himself up where people can see that. Employers down the road can see that he's able to play football and win that scholarly award, that's a, that's a big bonus to have for him. Yeah, it definitely is. Keir hands it off to Grissom, and met at the line of scrimmage, but he's, he keeps moving and gain, gains about four yards on the carry. But, you know, again, going back to Taylor Nickitzer, he was, as I mentioned before in that documentary, he was centered around it, basically. There was three guys they followed, and he was one of them, and he's just a great all-around guy, and being the center basically is the leader of the team, other than the quarterback. Yeah, definitely. And I remember meetings, even back to last fall, when he wasn't even a senior leader, he was always sit up right in the front of the broom and made sure that everybody was listening and paying attention. And he always paid attention to Coach Keller last year and then Coach Dunn in the spring. So you love to have guys like that on your football team. As Michael Keir looking to pass, going down the field, and it is almost intercepted by – Tyere Jefferson, the redshirt sophomore from New Jersey. Yeah, a little miscommunication. Looked like Co Coach Kira, Michael Keir wanted Tom Green to turn that one upfield because uh, he looked like he was open downfield, and Michael Keir just got a little complacent there and uh, had to throw that one away. But again, back to Taylor one more time. He, he dubbed me the nickname the Weatherman 
on the team last year. So uh, every time I see him, even now, he'll call me, he's yell over to me, oh, the weatherman. So uh, that's another cool thing about Taylor Nickitzer. And he is a junior, so he should be back next year as well, which is great to see. And that spiraling punt by Michael Keir is fair caught by Reynolds at the 25-yard line. So, again, Taylor Nickus are going to be that, that leader again, that senior leader now next year. Yeah, I, I, my apologies. I thought he was the senior leader this year. He's uh, definitely, you. Uh, for me playing on the team, he acted like a senior. So, uh, I, that's a, a guy, again, he could win that award again next season. Yeah, definitely. But we have a player down here for Kutztown lying on the 50-yard line. And, Dylan, take a look here at the Facebook page here. You can check it out. Yeah, definitely. We know somebody's going to be checking it out, and that's you, Anthony. Uh, always on Facebook. We're actually trying to integrate you to Twitter now, trying to get you involved in the Twitter sphere. Election night, you were all over Twitter retweeting and uh, keeping us up to date there. So now it's not only Facebook, Anthony. It's uh, Twitter, Anthony, as well. I like both. They're both good. <laughs> the only thing is, I said this before, Twitter, just get rid of your, your character limit. There are times when I'm like, I need to put, like, just three more characters in well, that's that's how you get those Twitter words, you know. That's how people the, the texting lingo that I hate teens texting lingo. That teens uh, always no use. So uh, you gotta you gotta implement that on the Twitter sphere. It, it makes it challenging. I think it's a good challenge. I like I like being challenged to keep my thoughts to only 140 characters. It's definitely difficult to keep it to 140 characters. Facebook, you're doing a good job. <laughs> no character limit. I can I can post a novel on Facebook if I well, want. Well, we're glad Facebook does not have a post limit or you would be hitting that every single day. Oh, well, maybe a share limit. I don't. <laughs> I share a lot of things. And a lot of those are, are CUTV events, it's including this one. When it goes up on YouTube, I'll make sure I share that out to my family and friends back home. Uh, I'm sure you would as well. But uh, Kutztown awaiting for their player to come back here. It looks like he's in some pain. He definitely working on his leg. Yeah, he definitely appears to be in a lot of pain. As there, you can see the cheerleader showing some great sportsmanship and taking the knee. That's one thing that's big difference about this year for California around the whole school. It's not just sportsmanship; it's just everyone's been acting better for each other. We've been going to events. Other sports teams have been going to events here on campus, and it's just I think that has a lot to do with Coach Dunn really changing the whole atmosphere around the whole campus. It's not looking good right now. They're gonna looks like they're gonna bring the Gator on the field, and yeah, they're gonna bring they're gonna bring the Gator on the field. We're gonna take a quick commercial break as uh, they help uh, this Chris Town player off the field. California up twenty eight to nothing. We'll be back after this short commercial break. The longest student produced show on CUTV. Is back with highlights and analysis, scores and standings, and more. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Save preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL. Power 92. Back for its third season with more live episodes and brand new games with host Stephen Ruffing. It's The Multimedia Access Center is an open lab where California University students can work on an assignment, attend a workshop, print a document for class, or take advantage of a variety of services such as large format printing, web development, and graphic design. Located in the renovated Natalie Student Center across from the student bookstore, the Mac Lab is also your home for OrgSync support and services. For hours of operation or for more information, stop by the Mac Lab, visit our website, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. 
And welcome back to Adamson Stadium where California leads 28 to nothing here as we're going to take a look at the regional rankings now as the player for Kutztown is still on the field, not able to be taken off by the Gator yet as we see Dylan, California ranked number one in the region. First time in a long time, California's been ranked number one. Yeah, definitely. And um, we know LIU Post is the nobody we can take lightly either. With they're 10-0 right now and up, up, look like they're up big there on – Assumption now 23 to 9. So that's a statement win for LIU Post. They only beat them by one point last time they played each other. Yeah. So LIU Post coming out with a vengeance. Yeah, they definitely are. And they could be a contending with us for the number one seed. But we did hear the chairman of our region committee say that Cal this is California's number one seed to lose. And they definitely are disappointing. So it's, I think those might be the top two teams and drop a team like Shepard down to three possibly. Well, if you if you take a look, and, and we have the coaches poll. I'd, I'd like to put that on the screen as well. The, the California is ranked sixth in the nation. The reason why I think the guy said that is because California has beaten three regionally ranked teams. Edinburgh's not on there. They were 24th. But then you see IUP. They are still ranked 11th in the country, and they beat them. Slippery Rock, they fell off the planet after we beat, after California beat them, and they were ranked high. California jumped a bunch of above all of them. So I'm sure that's why he's saying this is theirs to lose. Even though Shepard's above them, they've beaten three ranked teams in the nation. Shepard hasn't yet. And that's exactly what he was talking about. I was watching that, that broadcast there Thursday night, and he was saying that, California has those wins, and then they also something Shepard doesn't have, but I know LIU Post does have this, the championship game, but that conference championship game, that hurts Shepard. They're, they're probably the most talented team in the region, possibly contending with, with California, but they just don't have that championship game, and the NBC is kind of down this year. There is Fairmont, but those perennial powers, Concord and Charleston, they're not as good as they have been. So, again, it is California's to lose, I think, but dropping a team like Shepard down to third, that's a the third ranked team is maybe third in the country, but then third in the uh, in the division just based on w quality wins that LIU Post and California has. Yeah, and you see the PSAC West standings there, California undefeated, but back to Shepard and MEC, they they're playing three and seven Urbana today, and it's 5:38 to go in the second quarter. Shepard is is winning 21 to seven over this Urbana team, and that's not necessarily a good win uh, for Shepard against this lesser quality team. And another Urbana. another thing they were talking about on that broadcast, too, is that here's we look at the PSAC East. They even have th four teams above 500. The MEC cannot say that. The PSAC West has four teams above 500. The PSAC East has four teams above 500. So I know those two two early wins against 2-8 and eight Millersville and 1-9 and nine Cheney hurt California, but, I mean, you have quality wins. The conference is good. The conference is better from top to bottom than than the MEC is. And LIU Post again, their two quality wins have come against Assumption. So now they're bringing the chef, the the uh, the stretcher stretcher out for the injured player. But uh, yeah, LIU Post two wins over the same opponent, which will make them in the conversation with California. But I just think you can't get a much better record than California. They really, their worst, their bad games, as you can see here on the schedule, against IUP, which, I mean, they're a tough team. And that was when they had quarterback Lenny Williams Jr. And then the next week at Clarion, they didn't play the best, but they still won 48-20. to 20. I mean, these games aren't close. They're not really competitive. There's only been two games all season that have been remotely competitive, and that was IUP, of course, 31-28. But Slippery Rock, for the first half, for the most part, was competitive. So this California team has done nothing but impress. And they don't have that one win where you're like, wow, they should have blown that team out. Against Mercyhurst, 55-14, to a game they should have won and they won it big. Then you look at Millersville, a game they should have won big, 61 nothing. You look at Cheney, a game they should have won big, 79-3. to So they're not letting down against lesser opponents. They're playing them just like they would anyone else. And that Edinburgh score, 52-7, to that's not how it was at the end of the first half. Uh, it, they turned it on in the second half. It looked like California may actually lose in that one, um, but they ended up coming away with a big victory there, and then you see Kutztown schedule there, Dylan. Yeah, and they're a different story for Kutztown. They have been in all close games all season long for the most part, and uh, they've done a great job after starting out 0-3. But California, again, we one of the 
things in our open to the keys of victory for Kutztown was to play 60 minutes. Because that's exactly what this California team does. Edinburgh played with California for the first 30 minutes, but they were unable to finish it out. They, they came out that third quarter and California just blew them away. And for those teams coming playoff time, even those tougher teams, they're going to have to play for 60 minutes against this California team. They're just too explosive and too powerful for you not to. And it definitely is. It's good to see, uh, we're talking about the injured player, California under, uh, on their knees. And But we're going to take a quick two-minute break here uh, for the injured player to be able to get off the field. Uh, hopefully he is well and we can come back to score. So it's California up 28 to nothing. Stick with us here on CUTV. CUTV's High School Football Game of the Week. Spring Doe at Jeff Morgan. Avella at California. Bell Vernon at Ringgold. Greensburg Central Catholic at Charleroi. Waynesburg at Southmoreland. Baldwin at Connellsville. Beth Center at Brownsville. Frazier at Bentworth. Bishop Canavan at Carmichael. The longest running high school coverage in Southwestern PA is on CUTV. CU TV News Center is California University of Pennsylvania's award-winning student television newscast. Your source for live, local, late-breaking news. Forecasts from the Cal U Weather Center. The region's latest entertainment news. Balkan sports highlights and regional scoreboards. With television news coverage you can't get anywhere else. Watch it live Thursdays on CU TV and on demand. CU TV News Center. Online. All the time. Since 1937, the Student Association Incorporated, known as SAI, has served the Cal U student body by providing activities, programs, and services. Every enrolled student has the ability to take part in over 125 different clubs and organizations. Managing participation in every SAI activity is easy with OrgSync, a powerful tool for staying connected. Located one mile from campus, the SAI farm has 94 acres of meeting and recreational space. SAI, it's your student association. For almost 30 years, CUTV has been the campus and community home for local news, sports, and entertainment. Broadcast in 100,000 homes in southwestern Pennsylvania, CUTV provides complete coverage of Vulcan sports as well as high school football coverage. Broadcast weekly live, CUTV News Center provides coverage of local and campus events, weekend weather, sports highlights, and feature stories. For more information on CUTV, check us out on the web, friend us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. And welcome back to Cal U as everyone mobs the injured player right now. A great show of sportsmanship from both teams here coming together to show support for this injured athlete. Uh, we can't speculate what happened. We know it's a leg injury. Uh, just we, we didn't know, we couldn't see what happened, Dylan. Yeah, we couldn't see that even on the replays because it was just away from the rest of the plays. But uh, you hate to see that for any athlete as you do see his his leg there in a in an air cast. That's never good to see. You really hope he's okay. He's definitely wincing in a lot of pain. And yeah, we we hope he is okay there, and his leg is is, is able to be be fixed. There. It is his right leg that is the injured uh, part there. Again, not sure what happened. It was towards the line of scrimmage and it didn't look like when I was trying to find the replay on the video board here from Sports Fever, it didn't look like there was any foul play involved. I, it just might have been a bad th bad place at the bad time. Yeah, and he, he was able to run down the field like hobbling down. You could tell he was injured and I saw him lay down there on the 50-yard line and that's when he really got in a lot of pain. So First you really, our thoughts are with line. him and you hope he's he, you hope he's able to recover from this one. I definitely here as California takes back on defense here at the 25 yard line, Kutztown. First and 10 from the 25. Back to action here. As DeGalbo gives it off to Reynolds and Reynolds getting about two yards on the carry. And Luke Repchek yet again, that anchor in the middle of the defense, able to make a big play. Both these teams are going to have to recuperate. That was a long break. That was 10, 15 minutes long. Uh, both teams are going to have to come back and uh, get their minds right, shake that one off, and try to get back in their mojos. 
as it's second down here. And second on eight. And DeGalbo in the gun. As DeGalbo screen pass there is complete there. And he gets about to the 34 yard line. As that one was Troy Parton. Third and two here for the Golden Bears. Yeah, we've seen Delgado all day long with those short passes, and uh, they've been haven't been working yet. They worked that first drive, and then the first drive here in the second half. But this is a big third down. If you're California, you want to get this stop. You want to get your offense back out on the field and add some cushion to this lead. As Delgado takes back here at the 33-yard line, third and two. As Delgado. Takes a snap, keeping it himself. And he's got a hole in DeGalbo here. Has some men to beat, and he gets the ball over the 50-yard line to the 42. And that's a great QB keep. Yeah, the design quarterback power there. We haven't seen that yet today, and we knew that that would be a problem for California's defense. And there, DeGalbo is able to get going on the ground and picking up a big first down and maybe getting this offense back in their group. As DeGalbo first and 10 here in Cal Territory. 7.20 to go here. As DeGalbo hands it off here. As he stiff arms the man and goes out of bounds there. That was number 23, Daryl Scott. Pushed out of bounds by Rapchak. And Rapchak again, and the and leading the team in tackles this season and uh, getting some more here. But they're an outside zone where they're almost able to get to him, but uh, Luke Rapchak's able to follow him out of bounds. Second down and nine for the Golden Bears. As DeGalbo in the shotgun here. Play action as he throws it deep down the field. And it's gonna be way overthrown over the head of Nate Harka. A nice job there. There's a new cornerback we haven't seen a lot this season for California, and that is Aaron Brown right there, number 27. We saw a couple guys in, interchange out for that corner position, and uh, Aaron Brown, he started the day out opposite Vondell Bell, but now Vondell Bell is out, and he is, uh, he's playing in for him and doing a great job. As it's third down and nine here for the Golden Bears. DeGalbo in the shotgun, looking to pass. Flips it over, and that one's complete to Reynolds. Reynolds finding a hole there and getting tackled at the 29-yard line, uh, excuse me, 31-yard line by Reynolds California. The There's number 10, Jordan Bowman. Bowman. And they've already doubled their first down in the first half, first and they only had four the in the first half, and we're up to around six or seven here in this second half. They're doing a better job moving the ball against the California defense. But this is where California's defense really starts to crank it up. Right about the 30 to 40 yard line is when they start playing their best football. First and 10 for the Golden Bears. As Kutztown's DeGoblo throws it up. And this is swatted away there. Great defense by number 32, Todd Coles Jr. Todd Coles with a nice play there. A smaller cornerback, but able to cover his man all the way down the field and then have one arm monitoring him and then able to bat it down with the other. That is textbook right there. And great for him to turn his head around. If he didn't turn his head around, pass interference. Yeah, definitely. Great job, great awareness there by Todd Coles Jr. Second down and 10 for the Golden Bears. Three receivers split out to the far side as DeGalbo looks to the sideline. As DeGalbo looking to pass over the middle. That one is complete wow. there. And he keeps his feet moving to the 15-yard line as that was a good catch by Kellen Williams. They're continuing this drive going again. Passes they weren't able to complete in the first half are becoming open now. And this defense is really going to have to batten down the hatches here and uh, really get things going. First and 10 for the Golden Bears. As the Galbo and they're under the gun here. Two receivers to the far side, one of the near. Reynolds is his sidecar to the near side. As he hands it off to Reynolds as he goes to the outside. 
as there's a flag on the play as Reynolds gets wrapped up immediately by Aaron Terry. Aaron Terry, one of the best open field tackles, tacklers on this California defense. Two flags on the play, one on either sideline. And we'll see what the referee calls here. As he's talking to DeGalbo. Uh, it may be a legal motion here on Kutztown. Asking Coach Dunn what he would like. So whether or not to decline it or accept it. And it's going to be an illegal motion legal there, procedure legal procedure. The it's going to be declined and because it was a you know, a loss anyways from Aaron Terry. Yeah, it was an, a nice tackle there. Again, Aaron Terry just very impressive what he's able to do in the open field as a defender. Second down and 15 here. That also makes it a loss of a down too, if you don't accept it. So that was a good call there by Coach Gary Dunn. As in the shotgun there, as there's a false start coming now. And you're just gonna take that one as they're gonna back him up five yards, Dylan. Yeah, definitely. And uh, can't afford that if he puts down done better here than in the first half, limiting those penalties, but maybe we should have added that on for a key to victory for them to not have all these penalties. I didn't uh, think it would be needed. Yeah, we definitely did it. Not a lot of penalties this season, kind of average in the conference. So uh, very uh, different to see a different team other than Cal getting these penalties called on them. Yeah, it definitely is. It's going to be second down and 21 now for the Golden Bears. The empty backfield for DeGalbo. Pressure coming. Thrown over the middle of the field is complete. And getting to the line of scrimmage was Kellen Williams. Yeah, Kellen Williams there, a bigger target at the outside. Worked his way open right across the middle. Able to break a tackle and then kind of hang on to guys. And that was against Jordan Bowman, a name we haven't really called a lot today. Usually all over the field making big turnovers, big plays. And uh, it's the first time we've really seen him in the action here. The goal boat. Empty backfield yet again. Reynolds split out wide to the far side. As DeGalbo looking to pass over the middle of the end zone. It is incomplete and almost intercepted. Jordan Bowman thought he had it, but it hit the ground and came up to him. And DeGalbo not accurate on that throw. Missed that one wide into the outside. Maybe a little miscommunication. Thought the receiver was going to hang on to his route and stick it right down the down the numbers, but he broke off and uh, Jordan Bowman almost got the interception uh, right as I just almost called that one. As it's fourth and 10 now, offense still on the field. The goal boat, empty set again. You Three have nothing to lose if you're them. You have to get points here. Three receivers split out to the near side, two to the far. The goal boat, trying to get Cal to jump off sides. Now he takes a snap. Under a lot of pressure, heaves it off his back foot and it is incomplete as DeGalbo got lit up by one of the California defenders. I believe that was Devonte Suber flying in there with a big hit. Yeah, DeGalbo, that's all he could do right there is just throw that one up and hope a receiver's able to make a play. Uh, he's definitely not had his best day for sure. This California defense has been suffocating this whole offense of Cutstown and uh, making big plays. Congratulations. First and 10 from the 13. 424 to go here in the third quarter. As Keir sends a man in motion, handoff up the middle to Grissom. As Grissom getting taken down there at the 18 yard line, gain of about three. We've seen that all day, just Grissom able to get those big first down carries that ends up opening up the passing game. But look for California to maybe keep to that ground game, keep to that ground attack, trying to use some clock and uh, keep their momentum that they have now after getting that big fourth down stop. Second down and six. As Keir in the pistol. Sending a man over to the slot position now. As Keir. Turns around, throws a screen pass, and a great move there by Gary Brown, I believe. No, excuse me, Tom Green yeah, on Tom, the play. Tom Green showed some speed right there. That was a very shifty 
speedy move there. Very impressive there by, uh, by Tom Green. It's third down and three for the Vulcans. It's 3.30 on the clock. As Kier's in the shotgun, through receivers to the near side. Kier looking to pass. Going deep down the field at green, and that is going to be incomplete. No penalty flags. That'll be fourth down now for the Vulcans. Yeah, another good, great stop there by the DBs for Kutztown. Uh, Tom, Tom Green was working his way downfield, but a nice breakup. Couldn't quite tell with the number there. These white jerseys kind of causing a glare, but. Uh, that was number 35, Seifud in Black. The redshirt freshman from Emota, Philadelphia there. As punting is the Vulcans. As his punt is away, it's a high punt. And this one actually takes a California bounce over the 50 yard line and gets to the 43. So a break there for Michael Keir. It definitely got the bounce on that one. Three minutes here for the third quarter. First and 10 Golden Bears from the 43. As we take a look around the region here, IUP up 21 to six over Bloomsburg. Chris Temple is leading this team right now. He has the entire team on his back. 22 carries for 164 yards, averaging 7.5 yards a carry. And he has scored three touchdowns, all three touchdowns for the Crimson Hawks. So he is a threat that Anyone who plays IEP, even without Lenny Williams, has to face. Yeah, and their quarterback's only two for seven, so it definitely has been all on the ground there for IEP. As a run up the middle by Reynolds, and he gets stopped at the line of scrimmage for no game. And that was Luke Rapcheck again, Rapcheck anchoring the middle of the field. Being able to stop him on that one and uh, just a nice tackle. Tried to spin out of it, but uh, it's hard to get out of a tackle made by uh, Luke Rapjack. Uh, second down and 10, LIU post here in the region, any 10, 29 to nine over Assumption. That is a score we were not expecting. Definitely not. We were actually talking about Assumption being able to maybe win that game, but LIU post is showing they're for real. And it's back to action here, to Goblo. Second and 10, looking to pass. And this one is going to be incomplete, out of bounds, they say. He made the catch. That was number 82, Kellen Williams again. Just incomplete, so it's gonna be second, excuse me, third down and 10. Yeah, almost had that one just. So Galbo led him a little bit out of bounds and uh, setting up a third down and long here for Kutztown. Third and 10 for the Golden Bears in their own territory. Ball at the 43 yard line. The Galbo in the shotgun, sending now Reynolds to the near side. Play clock at 10 seconds. As the Galbo really trying to find a, a play here. Now at five seconds. As the Galbo, as there's going to be a flag here for a false start. And again, this miscommunication on this Kutztown team is causing them to get these off, uh, this false start penalties. And I mean, the clock is winding down for DeGalba, so he's trying to hurry them up. Yeah, definitely. That's probably the sixth or seventh false start we've seen committed by this Kutztown offensive line. Third and 15 for the Golden Bears. Ball now at the 38 yard line. As doubles look here right now for the offense. DeGalbo looks for the pass here under a lot of pressure and it's hit from behind, the ball is out. California may pick this up and score a touchdown, but it is a stop at the 10 yard line. Number five for California picked it up, Brendan Blair. He saw the ball and went for it and great heads up play by him. But you gotta talk first about the hit from behind. Yeah, definitely a huge hit there by Jordan Lardani. We've seen that all season long. Lardani around the edge, the blind side of the quarterback, and the ball squared out. No one saw it, and then Billy Bear right there jumps on that ball and uh, almost took it back for a touchdown. And if I'm DeGalbo, I'm yelling at my left tackle there because he just let Lardani fly through the line and hit him 
without him realizing it. And he's walking off the field rather well, you know, for being hit behind like that. And this defense for California has been able to force so many turnovers this season. One of the best in the whole entire country in terms of turnovers. And uh, you'd love to see that if you're a defense. Yeah, as uh, Kier coming back on the offense here for California in the red zone and the, go and the uh, first and goal actually. Now it's from the nine yard line. This Kier looking to pass. Goes to Gary Brown. Gary Brown gets into the end zone untouched for the California touchdown. 18th touchdown on the season for future NFL player Gary Brown. What a fantastic season he is having and kind of a quiet day today. They went to him the whole first quarter almost. But again, Michael Kier, you saw him look over there before the play. He knew he wanted to go to and that's Gary Brown right there working his way in for the touchdown. I'm telling you, this California team is going to miss him next year. As that kick is up, and it is good. So with that, California leads it now 35 to nothing over Kutztown here with a minute 59 to go in the third quarter. Stay tuned for more of the PSAC Football Championship here on CUTV. For almost 30 years, CUTV has been the campus and community home for local news, sports, and entertainment. Broadcast in 100,000 homes in southwestern Pennsylvania, CUTV provides complete coverage of Vulcan sports as well as high school football coverage. Broadcast weekly live, CUTV News Center provides coverage of local and campus events, weekend weather, sports highlights, and feature stories. For more information on CUTV, check us out on the web, friend us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. And welcome back to California as they lead 35 to nothing because of that man right there, downtown Gary Brown. And Dylan, take a look at this touchdown once again. Gary Brown, just great uh, awareness there. Yeah, came With that motion. motion and uh, maybe a little whip route, couldn't see quite outside. Yeah, it is a whip route. He's able to turn back around. That's tough if you're a DB. You want to try to get out there in the flat and cover him. And he just says, whoop, turns right around and became wide open there for Michael Keir. Uh, that's a man, if you're an NFL scout, uh, they're looking at him, yeah. Yeah, we, as, as our producer there, Gary, just told us, we may be playing with him on Madden next year. Uh, hopefully the Madden rankings people are watching him right now and uh, getting I'll, his skill set pretty I'm gonna good. I'm going to hack into those rankings. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rank him a, a 99 uh, overall right there. And then you're going to play against me and beat me probably. Uh, yeah, you know, Gary Brown. Yeah. yeah, you know. <laughs> as Michael, uh, excuse me, William Brazil kicks that one off and gets to the five-yard line there as Reynolds has it and finds a hole. Reynolds getting taken down to the 25 yard line and there's a penalty flag flying, two of them coming in at different times. So this may be offsetting penalties. There's definitely a holding. I saw where number 30, Chad Hagen, really got held there and uh, took official after him kind of pleading for the call and finally got that penalty flag thrown. And we have holding on the receiving team. Holding against the return team. And it's going to be first down there, only one holding penalty. Now you'll see right here in the middle of your screen, yeah, right there. Drug uh, him down right there. Nobody called it till that till that official with back jugs called it. He slipped on the play, and you guys are slipping. You're going to grab for anything, and he grabbed a California player and dragged him down. So kind of feel for him a little bit there. He kind of slipped and fell and had his arms out. But a penalty is a penalty, and Kutztown right now unbelievably has 60 yards of penalties. And California's only got 30. And I think this is the first time all, actually in two years, that California's had less penalties than the opposing team. It's, it's a, some would say there's a miracle of taking place here on Absent Field. The California team is not the most penalized team in the game. Got to correct you. It's Addison Stadium at Hefner Bailey Field. Yes, yeah, my, my <laughs> Hefner apologies. Bailey. Don't forget. Hefner Bailey, yeah. First and 10 here from the nine yard line. as the Galbo, and we have a penalty flag. This is going against Kutztown. We have a delay of game here, and this is gonna push them to the 
one yard line maybe. Maybe half the distance to the goal here. Oh yeah, half the distance to the goal puts them at the five yard line. But again, this and they're now in their own end zone. First and 14 from the four yard line. The Galbo in the gun. Handing it off to Reynolds. Reynolds getting wrapped up immediately. And he will get maybe a yard. Actually, he's going to go back to the line of scrimmage. And somebody came out with the ball. <laughs> Aaron Terry had it, but they're going to say he was uh, forward progress was stopped. Yeah, and it definitely was on that one. A host of California defenders there. Luke Rapchek again, saying his name all game, saying his name all season was the first to make contact. And then a host of California defenders came in and brought him down. And we have an injury timeout again. It looks like there's another Kutztown player down, Dylan. Don't want to see this again. I'm not sure who this is. Uh, looks like number 13 for Kutztown, Craig Reynolds. Yeah, that Craig Reynolds has seen all day. He's the all-around player there for Kutztown. He's kind of limping a little bit here, shaking up. And that's the guy that hobble off. Yeah. has given it his all, all game, and that's oh, the no guy doubt. looking at Kutztown. That's definitely a leader on their team. Has really impressed us just with his all-around effort he's put out today. And Craig Reynolds is a redshirt sophomore. You're going to see him a lot more if you're from the East. Yeah, definitely. And uh, same with quarterback Del Gabo, only a redshirt freshman. So both those guys can uh, really, this team can build on it for the future. Oh, definitely. This team definitely can come back. As it's second down and 13 here from the five-yard line now. The Galbo and the gun handoff up the middle and his spin move, but wrapped up immediately by Rapchak. And I believe that one was Daryl Scott on the play. Actually, it was number four, James Waugh. Yeah, one thing I can tell you is I'm glad I'm not playing against him like I did in high school anymore. Luke Rapchak is tough to stop, and especially back home in West Virginia where we're nowhere near the level of talent here in the PSAC, and he's still doing the same thing he did back in high school. Third down and 12 now. He's the type the of defender Bears. that gives you nightmares, and uh, definitely had some nightmares about Luke Rapchak in high school. <laughs> As this is aired out, and it's going to be overthrown, and you got to think that Galbo just whipped that one out there because if he didn't, it would have been a safety, and he would have gotten hit really hard. Yeah, definitely, definitely felt the pressure and had to get rid of that one. Uh, nice coverage all around there by California. And a punt here for the Golden Bears. As this one, a spiraling punt to Aaron Terry. Terry at the 40 yard line, has some space upfield to work with. He's at the 25 yard line and a flag coming. He gets taken down at the 10 yard line. I think Terry this is gonna be a block and a back on the Dylan. Yeah, but I saw a heck of a block by Gary Brown making a chop block. And I'm not sure if that's what they're calling because that mm -hmm. was a perfectly legal block and it looks exactly where they called it. And that really frustrates me because that was a great block by Gary Brown. And we're going to see what they call here, but well, they're probably not in that. That's what I'm saying. I, got yeah, I think it's against California, definitely. I, I don't think it is. The guy and they're going to call it a chop block, Dylan. You were right. We're going to take a look, Dylan. Break it down. Break down what a chop block is. I uh, definitely think you're allowed to do this right here. You see Gary Brown kind of out of your screen. It was a perfectly, I can tell you I saw it, it's a perfectly legal block there by Gary Brown. It's unfortunate they brought it back because that was impressive, and I'm sure scouts will see that and see a receiver being able to block like that, that's very impressive. You can do that in the NFL, and they're going to let you do it. Yeah, definitely there. and We'll see here. I got the, the broadcast up on ESPN3 right now on my laptop, so we're going to take a uh, – I'll take a look at that when it comes up as well. But Keir taking this ball at the 50-yard line here. As McCauley moves over, as Keir looking to pass. Under pressure, and Keir finding a way to keep in his feet, and he's going to go out of bounds at the 50-yard line, so a gain of zero on the play. A nice job eluding those tacklers there by Michael Keir. All diving at his ankles. feel like some, as you say, those dogs are uh, ankle biters, they call them, and uh, they're just going after uh, his ankles, and he's able to get around all of them and make it back and pick up a gain of one on the play. And a... Good job there by Michael Kier to get back. And I did see the uh, the play there. That, that, that was the official call. He kind of dove at his ankles there. 
to, to make the uh, the block. I'm pretty sure that rule is though, if they're not engaged, you can make that block. They called that a foul though in uh, in D1 football. I remember watching that. So uh, you're watching the PSAC championships at the end of the third quarter. It's 35 to nothing in favor of California. We got one more quarter to go here at Adamson Stadium here on CUTV. The Multimedia Access Center is an open lab where California University students can work on an assignment, attend a workshop, print a document for class, or take advantage of a variety of services such as large format printing, web development, and graphic design. Located in the renovated Natalie Student Center across from the Student Bookstore, the Mac Lab is also your home for OrgSync support and services. For hours of operation or for more information, stop by the Mac Lab, visit our website, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. And welcome back here at Adamson Stadium here. The score is 35 to nothing in favor of the Vulcans as we're about ready to go here. The fourth quarter here, California shutting them out 35 to nothing right now as Dylan take a break down some of these third quarter highlights for both teams. And there's the hard hit there by Lardani on Delgado and everybody's looking around for the ball and Brendan Blair sees it, you almost see him looking around and then once he sees that ball, he really perks up and Rain and got it. Uh, Almost got the touchdown too on that play. And that was a heads up, play to the whistle kind of play. He saw the hit, and then he finally was looking like, where's the ball at? You gotta be a ball hawk. Yeah, you if do. you can find the ball and pick it up, no matter what, just pick it up and run with it. You may end up with the, with the, uh, the possession. And there's California's own prime time there, Gary Brown with the touchdown, his 18th on the season. 18th receiving touchdown on the season. Kier handing off up the middle, and he's got a big hole there. And he gets flipped Hello, up at the 34-yard line, that was Jalen Bell with an explosive run. Yeah, Jalen Bell is not afraid to lower his shoulder. He's running right at that safety and said, told him to come here, buddy, and uh, ran him right over there. That's what you love to see from a running back. Gary Brown would have tried to hurdle him. As Michael Keir in the shotgun there. Looking to pass. As Keir just throwing this one away. And was he out of the pocket? There's a receiver in the area. He just yeah. threw, it, threw it high on that one. As that's going to be second down and 10 now for the Vulcans. Second down. 14.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. As second and 10 for the Vulcans. As Kier... Wasting some time here, 15 on the clock. As Kier takes the snap, looking to pass. Under pressure, airing it deep down the field to Gary Brown. Gary Brown trying to make the acrobatic catch, but cannot, just can't get his hands on it. And that's gonna be incomplete. That was a, almost a spectacular catch there by Gary Brown. Michael Kier almost had enough on this one. And Gary Brown, as you can see here, Almost jumping over the defender. That was a, almost a beautiful, beautiful catch. Third and 10 here for the Vulcans. Gary Brown is over 100 yards receiving yet again today. Nine receptions, 103 yards, and two touchdowns. So I'm going to give this man an award. For real. <laughs> Third and 10 here, and I'm interested to know who you think the PSAC uh, championship MVP would be. That Michael Keir, Gary Brown, maybe some defense. Who, who do you think? Who do you think, Dylan? Uh, I say, uh, you gotta. I say, I say, right now it's Kier, Michael Kier. Michael Kier, as you see there, a great uh, reception by Jalen Bell at the 20 yard line, getting a big gain here for the Vulcans. Just you look at Kier, looking to the right, doesn't see anything. Looks to the left, and then bam, finds Jalen Bell in the flat, and does a great job there. But also a guy you could look for is Luke Rapcheck now with 13 tackles. One That's sack. unbelievable and one and a half tackles for a loss. Yeah, just give it to Coach Gary Dunn. I think that's <laughs> Not the real wrong. MVP in this one. 
as play action over the middle to Luke Smorey, and Smorey gets the ball to the 11-yard line. So a gain of nine on that one. And Dylan, you might be right. This whole team is firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah, definitely. It's just past the year, especially last season, you'd think California going into a game like this and uh, where California would just kind of take them lightly. California has not taken anyone lightly all season long. As Michael Kier going to be in the pistol today. Second and two now from the 12-yard line as he sends McCauley over. Play action, screen pass over there to, I believe that was Green Luke Smory. That was actually Tom Green. And that's a first Luke down for the Vulcans. First down. Yeah, that was Tom Green there. A little, a little misdirection play there by California. Tom Green showing what he can do in the space, but a nice open field tackle there by number 36 for Cutstown. And that is Cox Code. We've seen doing a great job covering Gary Brown and now with a nice tackle on Tom Green. First and goal from the nine yard line here as Michael Keir in the shotgun. 13 and 03 to go as he sends McCauley over. Keir handing it off up the middle and he's going to keep his feet moving but get taken down at about a yard of a loss there. So first and goal from the 10 now. And the second did a great job there. Did all he could do. A lot of pressure coming in on him right there. And the second and goal from the 11. As McCauley checks out. Chad Livingston is back in as well. Might see him number two here. Get that, get that man a touchdown. 35 to nothing the score here. As Keir in the gun. As Keir looking to pass. Scrambling here. And he's just going to throw this one away. Third down and 12, certain 11, excuse me, but there's a flag on the play, Dylan. Yeah, that's the area of holding. Didn't quite see anyone there. Let's see what they call here on this one. And I believe it's going to be a hold here. It is against California. That's going to back him up to third, second and 21, I believe. Second and goal from the 21 yard line, Dylan. That's a long way to go. Yeah, but uh, he said all season long, it's, uh, it could be a uh, first and goal from about the 50, and I think they'd still be okay there with California, just their explosive the ability that the they 21. have. Uh, second and 21, 12 or nine to go here on the clock. As Michael Keir looks like he's gonna be in the shotgun with Jalen Bell as a sidecar. As Keir looking to pass, throwing it over the middle, and it is caught for the touchdown. What a touchdown reception there by Tom Green. And all four receivers now for California with a touchdown on the day. That's great for them. Michael Keir spreading the ball all the way around. And what a nice job by Michael Keir finding Tom Green across the middle on a deep, deep post pattern. And like I said, Second and goal from the 20, no problem for this California offense. As William Brazil on to kick the extra point here. Brazil's kick is up, and it is good. So the score now, California 42, Kutztown nothing here in the PSAC Championship game at Addison Stadium on CUTV. Since 1937, the Student Association Incorporated, known as SAI, has served the Cal U student body by providing activities, programs, and services. Every enrolled student has the ability to take part in over 125 different clubs and organizations. Managing participation in every SAI activity is easy with OrgSync, a powerful tool for staying connected. Located one mile from campus, the SAI farm has 94 acres of meeting and recreational space. SAI, it's your student association. Hey, 
And welcome back to the PSAC Football Championship Contest here where the number six California Vulcans lead the Kutztown Golden Bears 42 to nothing in the fourth quarter here with 12.04 to go. And, and Dylan, it's a, a big lead right now for the Vulcans. Yeah, five touchdown performance by Michael Keir. We take a look at the replay again here. Michael Keir finding his fourth different receiver for a touchdown. That one's the Tom Green spreading the love around to the whole receiving core. That's great for them and great for Michael Keir now with five touchdowns on the day. Another great pass by Michael Keir. Threading the needle, getting it through the defensive back there as he take a look at some of the stats, Dylan. California, 58 plays for 352 yards. That's really been, they could have more yards, but this defense just done a great job. Has California's. As this is returnable from the goal line here. And he gets the ball to the 20 yard line on that return. Not much big returns for this Kutztown team to him. Yeah, not many big returns at all, which we've seen all year long. This California kicking team, one of the best in the country of limiting people to uh, not a lot of yards on special teams. First and 10 from the 19. And Dylan. How important do you think this would be to get a shutout here? I know it's still way early in the game to, to talk about this, but how big would that be? It would be huge for this defense and really make a statement and say, so they could say that they shut out their opponent in the PSAC championship. That's uh, something special. As DeGalba looking to pass. Incomplete there, trying to find Wah. And it's going to be second down and 10. And that's really... Uh, really impressive they're able to shut this team out. I think Coach Dunn would want them to. He might uh, keep the uh, keep that defensive line in there a couple more drives to uh, ensure that because that, uh, like you said, will be huge. At the Galbo, second and 10 here. As the play clock there and 20, and he hands it off there to 23. Daryl Scott, Scott the ball and he loses about three Scott yards on the play. Yeah, nice open field tackle yet again. All of California's DBs can make open field tackles, and lots of holding going on there, but it's okay. A nice tackle for a loss there by California's defense. Third and 14 from the 15. As the Galbo in the gun. Two receivers on either side. As DeGalbo looking to pass over the middle, and that one is incomplete, in and out of the hands of Troy Parton. And it looks like they're going to be punting yet again, Dylan. Yep, they are going to be punting yet again. Another great stop. This defense, I'm, I think I'm getting tired of talking about the offense. There's more love need to be put on this defense. They are done spectacular, and it's almost like – it's being overshadowed by this offense, but it is simply spectacular what, is de what this defense has been able to do this season. As this punt is away, and they're going to call fire on this one as the ball goes out of bounds here, unreturnable. There's some around. other things that they yell out for plays like that, but they're probably not, be <laughs> probably not good to so, say them over, poison. So over the air. Some of them that we used in high school shouldn't, shouldn't bring them up over the air. Well, that's on the football field, and they can, they can say what they want. But uh, definitely want to get, that, get out of the way of that one. As Dylan, break down our CU TV Twitter page. Yeah, CU TV Twitter. Uh, check out all of our stuff on there. Uh, all of our, we'll put all the links to our YouTube pages and just keep up to date with what we're doing. And also give my, my man Anthony here a follow now. He's, a, he's on the Twitterverse now, uh, taking advantage of that as well. As uh, Michael Keir going to be here in the gun with John Franklin III as his back. As Keir handing it off up the middle to Franklin. Franklin dancing around, getting the ball to the 49-yard line in Kutztown territory. Yeah, Tom, Tom Green. John Franklin III, known as a goal line back, able to uh, keep going here and uh, getting him some carries now not on the five-yard line anymore. He's getting a carry around here around midfield. Second and five from the 49-yard line. As Keir 
sending Luke Samori in motion. Hand up up the middle to uh, excuse me, Franklin. Franklin again. He gets about three yards on the carry. Yeah, Bayard right down the middle there. Another guy that they may be able to get a touchdown here on this drive to spread the love yeah, to even more guys is that senior tight end, Paul Third Butler, who's done a great job with this program. Uh, had to sit out during the spring because of some eligibility things, but uh, he's back here. He's able to get his senior year in and uh, just, a, just a great guy and a, a big asset to this team. Third and two for Michael Keir. As Franklin move over to the right, Luke Smory motions over. As John Franklin III takes the ball and can run with it, and he's powering through there as he finds a hole and more as he gets the ball to the 20, excuse me, 31 yard line. Another interesting fact about Paul Butler as well is he was actually at the University of Akron Played there for a year and then transferred down to California. So one of those guys, kind of like Gary Brown, had some Division One offers that end up coming back to California. First and ten here from the 31. As Kier electing to just keep running the clock out here. Less time for Kutztown to possibly score and break the shutout. As Kier changing the plays up, under 10 seconds to go here. Now five on the play clock. Kier, looking to pass now. Over to John Franklin, the third, and it is incomplete off his hands. Second down and 10 now for the Vulcans. And uh, that's a guy, Coach Coach Salisbury gives me some uh, love, as you could say, joking around with me, but he joked with uh, John Franklin all last season about being able to catch the ball and always uh, had a joke for him like he has a joke for me. But uh, that's just something I remember from the team last year is they – they tried to work with uh, with John Franklin to get his hands back because uh, he's more of a runner and he, he understands that he's more of a runner. Second and 10 now for the Vulcans. Kier in the gun. Five seconds on the play clock. Sending Tom Green in motion now, handing it off to Gr uh, Gris Franklin, the third, excuse me. And he pushes forward to get to the 30 yard line. And he may keep electing to run the ball here and as the clock keeps winding down. Yeah, they may be able to do that because right on the edge of field goal range here, so let's see what they ended up doing here. As there's 8.35 on the clock here. And gotta say, great uh, great work on the clock operator today. Uh, Jeff Higgins running the graphics down in the truck. Doing a great job keeping the clock up today because we don't have an embedded clock here at CUTV. So he did a, he's doing a great job here. Third and nine for the Vulcans. As Kier scrambling there, and he gets out of a tackle, but then gets taken down at the 35-yard line. So it's going to be fourth down here. And you know what? Why not? Send out William Brazil. Send out William Brazil. I want to see the kick. to do here. They may end up punting this one. Let's see what they end up calling from the sideline here. Another thing I'd like to give a sh – a shout out to the to the swim team. There are a couple rows down in front of us, all sitting here, staying here, sticking around for this whole game because I know that the uh, coach Dunn is has one of their guys, and some of the football players have gone to the swim meets. Uh, awesome to see the swim team here sticking around late into the fourth quarter. And the clock is winding down. They may take a delay of game penalty here just to punt it away. As there will be a penalty flag here for delay of game. So California taking the delay game penalty, so Michael Keir has a little more room to punt this one. Michael Keir, yeah, don't, don't call that too much. The uh, quarterback there as the punter, but he's done a great job. Kind of got lucky with the bounce up the last time, and I'll be sure to tell him about that one. But uh, he's definitely, I remember last year he always bragged to the team. He's like, hey, I got the, I got the best punting average on the team, and uh, I, think he, I think he has that this year as well. Michael Keir setting the set to punt. <laughs> The snap is away, your blockers down the field as it is a nice punt there. And this one is going to bounce favorably for Kutztown as that one goes down at the five yard line. And Michael Kier, great punt. How about the quarterback there with a beautiful punt? And Dylan, we're gonna go through again your keys to victory. You see what they achieved or not? 
California definitely has limited those penalties. Not too many penalties, haven't even reached five penalties. That's all they've had all game. And they've definitely stayed focused the entire game. And then contained El Gobbo, they've definitely done that as well. He is. He has not had a great game, only 149 yards passing, 13 for 31. He's been sacked five times now, so just great job. By 13 this for 33. 13 for 33, yeah, just a great job by this defense. As they're going to elect to run the ball here, and they're going to get thrown down there with a about a one-yard gain, so Wah only getting one yard here. And nice job by the interior defensive line. We've been saying it all in it. All game, that's where it starts, the interior of the defensive line. And that's just what makes California so deadly on defense, is just their interior defensive line. Second and seven here on the nine yard line. Under 640 to go here as DeGalbo under the shotgun as he sends a man in motion. As DeGalbo keeps it himself. Spin move there and he gets to the 13 yard line. And a gain of about three on the play. Second down and four now, excuse me, third and four now for the Golden Bears. And that's one thing California wanted to do was that slow down his rushing attack of Colin Delgabo, and he only has 38 yards rushing now on the day. So again, they've done, they've done their job. And that's exactly coming into this game, what you wanted to do is just do your job and California can come out with the victory. And that's what they've done today. It's third and four now for Delgabo in his offense. Three receivers split out to the far side. Pressure coming, and that one's tipped at the line and almost intercepted, and it's incomplete. Oh, man, that was almost a great defensive play. I mean, it was still great, but almost an even better one. Yeah, Luke Rapjack, that's one thing he doesn't have, and that's the best hands in the world. Almost got that one right in his hands and almost dove and caught it, but couldn't quite bring it in. And someone almost on, on the bottom of the pile there almost picked it up off the uh, – the hands there, but a, just a great defensive play there. And now they're punting it once again in their own end zone. Chad Livingston out there, I believe, for California. This is punted to Chad Livingston, and he'll have to fair catch it. Smart play by the freshman there to fair catch that one. You don't try to be a hero and get taken down pretty hard, so good, good fair catch there. As we take a look around to see... Uh, the region again, IUP up 35 to six. As there's touchdowns from PG, Pegasus and Temple and Mike Petropola has a touchdown there. Yeah, so Touchdown running, look at all yeah. those rushing yards. They have tons of rushing yards in that game. LA Post 43, Assumption 23, 718 to go in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame, Ohio, down 21 to 14 to West Virginia Wesleyan. Hey, that's my hometown school right there. Congrats to West Virginia Wesleyan up on that one. And then Shepard up on Urbana, 28 to 14, as Jimmy Wheeler can break it here, and he has speed. Jimmy Wheeler getting taken down at the five yard line. What a run by Jimmy Wheeler. Yeah, what a run there. He's a little frustrated after that one, almost broke it. But as you can see, there's that breakaway speed we've talked about. Look at this play right here. He's able to break a tackle actually right here lowers his shoulder breaks a tackle what a hit almost almost broke it there what a play there by jimmy wheeler a touchdown saving tackle by kenny williams and jimmy wheeler just doing what he did last season and it's great to see first and six first and goal from the six excuse me as Kier handing off to jimmy wheeler wheeler this time he's going to get wrapped up at the 10 yard line but Still, not a bad run there to get him down there by Jimmy Wheeler. Not at all. Yeah, he's uh, he, he he wants to get this touchdown right here. You know they're going to try to give it to him. He deserves it after that nice run. Uh, just a, a great day for, for Wheeler. Four carries for 40 yards. Uh, excuse me, 33 yards. And he did lose some yards there. Just unreal for Jimmy Wheeler as Kier's in the pistol with Jimmy Wheeler in the backfield. Again, handoff to Jimmy Wheeler. Wheeler with his speed, and there's a flag coming. He's in the end zone, but this may be coming back to him. Yeah, and, uh, again, Jimmy Wheeler, you see, frustrated after that one, almost getting that touchdown he's been dying to have. Yeah, he 
put his head down there. Just a little upset that there's a holding penalty against holding California. Well, it shows this team wants them to get in the end zone. They're trying hard. They're blocking hard. They want Jimmy to get that touchdown. So second down here still. As, yeah, we have a new quarterback here here for California. Number 12, Marcus Prather, again, getting some action in a championship game. Yeah, definitely good for him to get some action here in a PSAC championship game. And how great is it that California is able to get their substitutes in for a PSAC championship? That's a statement in itself right there. Marcus Prather in the, uh, in the pistol here. Prather handing it off to Wheeler. Wheeler with his speed finds a hole and there's the touchdown Wheeler's been looking for. And this gives California the 48 to nothing lead right now. Right before the play, I was like, oh, it's about to bet. Every penny I have on it being a zone to the left side, and that's exactly what it was. And Jimmy Wheeler there able to find the hole. Nice cut right there in the backfield. And then hit, there's his breakaway speed where he's able to get into the end zone, takes a hit at the end. But again, one of those talented guys that we'll be seeing a lot come playoff time. As William Brazil on to kick the extra point here. 48 to nothing here. As William Brazil takes the snap, the kick is up. And this one is good. The Vulcans lead it here with 4.19 to go in the game. 49 to nothing over the Kutztown Golden Bears in the PSAC Championship game here at Adamson Stadium on CUTV. CUTV's High School Football Game of the Week. Spring Doe at Jeff Morgan. Avella at California. Bell Vernon at Ringgold. Greensburg Central Catholic at Charleroi. Waynesburg at Southmoreland. Baldwin at Connellsville. Beth Center at Brownsville. Frazier at Bentworth. Bishop Canavan at Carmichael. The longest running high school coverage in Southwestern PA is on CUTV. Welcome back here at Adamson Stadium as California leads it 49 to nothing. And we're going to take a look again at that replay real quick of Jimmy Wheeler's touchdown here. Dylan, break it down. Yeah, again, that outside zone, that Jimmy Wheeler's favorite play there. Nice job by the offensive line creating that hole and Jimmy Wheeler able to hit that hole and take it in for the end zone. But we're looking at IUP in Bloomsburg score right now. It's 42 to 6. IUP has 383 rushing yards. 13 passing yards with their quarterback being Two out. completions. That's two, it. Two completions. The same guy. The same guy. So uh, I think they've made the transition to a running team now with their quarterback, Lenny Williams Jr., out. But if if if, if their team that's going to be in the in the regional playoffs, uh, you again, watch the selection show on Sunday at 5 to see who they're playing, who California will be playing. But that makes them very one-dimensional, Dylan. If someone can stop the run, a team can stop the run, they may have that game in a bag. Yeah, definitely. And uh, right now their matchups against Fairmont State, which would be a great matchup to see. As he keeps his feet moving, this is Kutz down here. There's a flag flowing here. That was James Wah. There's a, flag, There's a flag on the play there. I believe it's holding against Kutz down here. But, I mean, he was down at around the 20-yard line, and then he kept his, his balance and feet moving there. That he did, and a uh, nice run back there. See, he broke the tackle there. A couple California guys missed him and uh, able to have a big run back, but uh, brought back due to a penalty. William Brazil was trying to make a hit on that play, too. <laughs> He's not the Penn State kicker, Joey Portis. No, he is not. And that's 13 penalties now against Kutztown. Yeah, 13 penalties, and that's a hold, so that's going to be 13 penalties for 84 yards. As it's first down and 10 from their own 22. The Galbo, I believe still the quarterback here, number 17. Yep, as he hands it off there. And it's a gain of about a yard on the play. 
You know, something we were talking about that could be very cool is that they put a Christian Del Gabo in. The twin brother, they're calling Del Gabo, their quarterback, put him in on defense and uh, like backyard back home going after his brother. That'd be pretty fun. I don't know if Coach Dunn would do that, though. <laughs> but uh, second down and eight here, 340 to go. And DeGalbo looking for some things from the sideline. If you're Coach Down, I'm still trying to score something. Break the shutout. Yeah, definitely. You do not want to get shut out, especially in a PSAC championship game. But for California, you want to shut them out. That's right. As DeGalbo in the gun, looking to keep it himself here as he keeps his feet moving and getting the ball to the first down marker at the 33-yard line. How cool is it, though, that your twin brother in high school, all four years, was your quarterback, and you, Christian, the center? That's pretty cool. That's a nice storyline there. And that family as well has a brother, another brother that plays football, an offensive lineman for Coastal Carolina, so I mean that's a football family to say the least. Yeah, definitely. As their family, uh, I'd be torn. You have Kutztown, you have Cal, you have Coastal Carolina. They're all over the place. Yeah, you would be torn. That's a that's a tough ask for a family, but uh, I'm sure they love it. As this ball is given off to Craig Reynolds, and he gets taken down for a loss there. He's trying to find some room to go. He's going backwards. And they're going to mark him down about five yards back. And that was Christian Dogalbo's roommate there, Vincent Alimenti, with the nice tackle. So there's 2.25 on the clock here and ticking. Second and 15. As they're in no hurry right now, Dylan. And I think they're just trying to get their offense settled down and just, and just, uh, Try to make sure they don't make any more big mistakes. As DeGalbo in the gun. Looking to pass. <coughs> DeGalbo airing it out, and it is complete there. What a catch by number 87, Ryan Hubley, the sophomore from Oxford. Yeah, what a nice catch there. The defensive back for California is draped all over him. That was a Gary Brown type catch yeah, there. That was a Gary Brown type catch. What a beautiful catch in your California's defense. You want to strap him up here and uh, try to get, try to keep the shutout because that will be big. Second shutout of the season if they're able to finish this one out. First and 10 from the Golden Bears at the California 44 yard line. As his pass is complete there to number 82 as he takes it out of bounds there. That was Kellen Williams. Now a minute and 34 on the clock. Gain of about seven. Second and two here. And this is a big stop here for California. Got him, stop him here, don't let him score. There's DeGalbo. Looking for some plays from the sideline. Looking to pass. DeGalbo throwing it deep down the field. Incomplete overthrown Passing to Williams. Tender for Williams. Third down. Yeah, had him open there. Just overthrew him. See there on replay, just about five yards shorter, and that would have been a completion there for DeGalbo. Third and th two now. Minute and 29 now. As DeGalbo in the gun. As he hands it off to Reynolds, Reynolds getting a first down and more there as he gets the ball to the 31 yard line. So moving them chains here. And moving them chains they are. They're getting this drive going and may put an end to this, uh, this uh, goose egg they have up on the scoreboard. 120 to go here in the contest. <coughs> As DeGalbo in the gun. As there's going to be a minute on the clock when he snaps it here. As he throws it, and it's going to be complete again to, it looks like, 82 Williams again. Yeah, Williams had that reception there with a big hit at the end of it by number 40, uh, Chad Garnett. 
Nigel Garnett, we've seen him a lot this season. That's his, his twin brother. The twins all over the place here at this game today. Second down and four for DeGalbo. As DeGalbo looking to pass. He's gonna be complete, I believe, yes, by Williams yet again. As they keep driving down the field, they're gonna be in field goal range here soon if they wanna to try to kick a field goal. Yeah, if they do wanna put an end to the goose egg, they may end up doing just that. As 56.2 seconds to go here. As DeGalbo in the gun. As that one is incomplete, and Dylan, I do believe we see a Gatorade bath possibly coming for Coach Gary Dunn. I see an open Gatorade container down there at around the 45 yard line. Something we may, we may wanna try to get on camera here. Yeah, Jordan Bowman, he's, he's the guy around it. Trying to keep it hidden from Coach Dunn. He doesn't have the headset on, so that's one thing. They, and there they are. Aaron, Terry, and Jordan Bowman have the Gatorade bucket. They're heading towards Coach Dunn there. You see it on your screen. They're just placing it right behind them. They got two Gatorade buckets as well. It, the Galbo's pass is complete, and that's a touchdown. Hold the phone. I mean, the game's basically over, but that's the shutout gone for California. And finally, Kutztown's drive pays off. Yeah, he turned the, turned the corner and Garnett around on that play. Wasn't sure where it went, and uh, it went in for the touchdown. As you see the kicker for Kutztown coming on to kick the extra point here. And it's gonna be gonna, an extra point here. They're gonna keep it here after the extra point, have the Gatorade cam on around Coach Doug. As the kick is up, and it is good. So the score now, 49 to seven with 48.1 seconds to go. And Dylan, if you're a player with the Gatorade bucket, when do you do it? I'm uh, not sure after that touchdown, they may not want to now. It's, a, it's definitely a th thought process you go through as a player. Uh, do, yeah, you, you may want the offense to, to do it here. They kind of left the Gatorade. You see it there on camera. Air Terry's kind of keeping watch over it, watchdog over the Gatorade. You gotta make sure you huddle around it so you don't let the coach see and you. You have the big lineman there and Zach Moorhead <laughs> blocking it in front, number 77 there, doing a great job, bigger body. You want a bigger body like that protecting the Gatorade. I love how we're analyzing the Gatorade <laughs> splash coming. <laughs> As you hear the band maybe in the background playing, all I do is win. And for California, all they have done this season is win. And that's exactly what, exactly right. They All they have done is win. And I'm thinking maybe the Gatorade bath comes after the first kneel down, possibly? I would think so. You gotta, you gotta stay with Coach Dunn wherever he goes. And uh, I know it's, you're getting antsy on the field. You're in a media timeout right now. It's live across the nation on ESPN3 and across the state on certain local channels. And I think it definitely would, there definitely would have been a Gatorade bath for not have been for that touchdown. Yeah. I think that thing definitely would have been coming. They're actually on their way over and they wanted to watch that last play. It ended up being a touchdown there for Kutztown. And that was a good touchdown though. I mean, Williams kind of caught it behind his back and made the play. So credit to Kutztown, they didn't let up. And you know, that's good for them. Another thing I'd like to give a shout out for is, there's only been one time all season where coach, the quarterback's coach in Chad Salisbury has been up in the press booth at the end of the game. And that was IUP. Every other game just shows you how dominant these wins have been. He is down on the sideline at the end of the game. So that's another, I mean, you can't really say that if you're any other team uh, to, to be in the bag with the last few minutes in the fourth quarter. As Aaron Bailey's back there to return the, punt, the kickoff too, as well as Jalen Bell. Two returners we don't see usually out here, so we'll see where this kickoff go leads. As the kick is away, it's a little squibber there, and this is gonna be returnable, and it's getting taken out by his own guy. And he was down there, that was number 33, Corey Bopp, I believe, on that. As it uh, looks like, looks they like they're grabbing. getting the Gatorade ready there, the one container at least. You got Luke Rafchek there. 
grabbing it with Edward. Oh, it's actually Jawan. Yeah, they got, they three, got of three of them out there. <laughs> they may be getting all the coaching staff here. Oh, four now. Paul Butler's grabbing the other blue one there. That's a water container there. It seems like all of the coaching staff may be getting splashed. <laughs> I, I mean, that would be the first. <laughs> I mean, these guys are stealth right now in terms of that. And there's a kneel down here. And that should be the end. They may have to take one more kneel. And actually, could sound called a timeout. Could sound called a timeout. <laughs> Don't and here call comes the, here comes the Gatorade. Down. Maybe they're they're, oh, they're 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 pulling it back. <laughs> they they went they went for it and then they got pulled back. <laughs> Paul Butler's like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to splash somebody with some water. <laughs> maybe they called a timeout just to see the Gatorade bath. Maybe nah, they, I don't know. Or they wanted no. They wanted to substitute players. Yeah, their seniors. Get their seniors out. That's good for them. Their last game here as a Golden Bear. Yeah. Get their seniors out on the field. Uh, last time they'll be out on the field. Here it comes. As Final approach. The kneel down happens. And here goes. Coach Wilson, <laughs> Coach Salisbury. Coach Dunn Ick. gets away from it all. <laughs> Coach Salisbury got it. Coach Wilson, there, and there it is. Done. Coach Gary Dunn gets mixed with water <laughs> and Gatorade. That's one for the ages as the band storms the field. California Vulcans are all over there, and the Gatorade buckets are getting tossed. It is a great win for a California Vulcans football team, 49-7. to These guys are pumped as we're about to have the championship ceremony. We're going to keep it here for the championship ceremony. And what a time to be alive if you're a Cal Vulcan. Yeah, the whole team, you see in the in the end zone down there, the whole team is excited right now. The band, the cheerleaders, the color guard, everybody's out there real excited about this one. And it's a great time for this explosive team here as California wins it here. And you hear a celebration. I haven't heard uh, the other song that we play. I'm not even going to mention it because I don't want to hear it at all this season. But celebration from Cool and the Gang and the marching band there. They always play that if we win. Coach Dunn soaked from that. And that's an ice bath too, you know. That, yeah, it's, it's cold, cold. out. So uh, they definitely got him. They also got Coach Wilson, the special teams. They tried to get Coach Craig. Couldn't quite get him. And then they got Coach Salisbury. And here's the spoils of victory. Break it down there. Right there they, they got Coach Wilson, got Coach Salisbury with the blue one. Saw both of them there. And then they go and get Coach Dunn after that one. Uh, that's just great. Uh, got got the th got three of the coaches there. Uh, cool and right see there. there. Yeah, they got Coach Dunn with a double whammy right there. Oh. Unreal, as you see the uh, football team all happy here as they're dancing along the celebration. And we're going to have the – Game replays for you here before we have the championship. And Dylan, break it down. Yeah, there's the first touchdown there by John Franklin the third. Uh, just done a great job all season. And this is a spectacular sight right now. The band is coming with the football team, and this is great. The band. Okay, so the documentary that happened, Coach Dunn told everyone to go dance with the band. And they're all together, dancing together. Unbelievable sight, Dylan. Yeah, definitely. This is what school spirit's all about. Uh, everybody's up here recording. This is definitely cool to see. It really is. And something I've never seen before, the band being out there with the football team. Uh, they were behind them the entire way as... It's just a mob at midfield right now. And if you're the band players, you don't want to make sure your, in your instruments are safe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a basically a mosh pit down there right now with everyone all around the 50-yard uh, the line. And just, you know, IEP's win was, was great because it was a closeout fashion for the Cole Bowl. Uh, this win was great because of the, the implications behind it, winning – the PSAC championship, chanting undefeated right now. And this uh, is the first time CUTV has ever had the PSAC championship game where California has won it on television. And that is so cool to see there for California. Great for Gary Dunn. 
his first year as a coach, and now they, I think they've pretty much locked up that number one seat with this dominating performance today. Oh, no doubt. LIU Post wins 43 to 23. Ladies and gentlemen, Lewisburg 42 to 6, the, the, the victory uh, in the Murray game here. I, uh, West Virginia Jones Wesleyan 21 to 20 over Notre Dame, of Ohio. Awards. But this 49 to 7 win is just unbelievable. As Let us first recognize today's runner up. We have Kutztown being University runner up here. Outstanding season and they had an outstanding Division season. Champion. They lost three games in the beginning and then won seven straight. And credit their team for having this amazing win, uh, this winning season. And just a great, great job by them. And we have Commissioner Murray there with the hardware. So we want to cover that. Next, the PSAC and is honored the to PSAC acknowledge one of the standout performers is, from today's contest. We're going to see the MVP and here. Leading the Vulcans today, our selection had 15 tackles. 15 one and tackles. And tackles one and a half tackles one for a loss. Fumble, one forced fumble. fumble recovery, one fumble sack recovery. And one sack and breakups. two pass breakups. This year's championship, this year's championship game, championship game MVP, is game MVP is 31, Luke Rabchak. What a victory for him. He can't believe it. A defensive player winning MVP. And he got injured last year. That's a feel-good story. He got injured, had to sit out the whole season, tore his hamstring, and that's so good for him there. I know that's some Central West Virginia love there. The Big Ten Conference back home in West Virginia is getting some love. And to uh, conclude, great, great for Luke Rapchick right there. Ask the team captains Man, the team captains are going to step forward to accept the trophy here soon. The 2016 champions, Pennsylvania the State California Athletic Conference champions Vulcans. right here. The California Vulcans trying to find it here. As you see the trophy right in the middle there. And it's so great to see that state trophy back here at California. And I know there's pictures in the locker room of the players up there holding the PSAC, the PSAC like championship trophy. And uh, they'll be able to get their own picture up there. Uh, so great for the Vulcans. So great for this whole school. Great for the university, alumni, everyone involved here. It's just, just great for the school after what happened a couple years ago. And then now to be here where we are right now, it's just it's what you asked for. I, again, I, I, I like to let everyone know, you again, watch that documentary. It was a great documentary. It's on YouTube. It's uh, 60 Seconds is the name of the documentary. And it's on California University of Pennsylvania's official YouTube page. And it's just, if you like this football team, you've enjoyed watching the season, go watch the documentary. I think you'll really enjoy it. <clears throat> and. And there also are some people wearing 64 and 17 sweatshirts, and those are actually for the Delgado brothers. So that's cool for them as well. They're down, their families are down there getting pictures right now. That's cool for them. I was wondering, I saw the 64 and 17. I was like, what is that? And then that's both their numbers here on the team: 64 Christian Delgado and 17. Uh, the his brother, Colin Delgado, the quarterback there. And cool for them, but again, this university. So great for them right now. And, you know, we see Coach Gary Dunn right there. It's going to be great having him on the coaches show, but Dylan, Coach Gary Dunn came into this team, this this organization and team kind of late, if you will, not being able to recruit many people. He kind of has what he has. He had to try to persuade the players to stay here and don't go and leave uh, and, and go somewhere else and transfer out uh, because of a coaching change. And most of the players stayed and, and – they they stick with they stuck with it. They're undefeated here. Just you know, talk quickly about Coach Gary Dunn. Yeah, Coach Gary Dunn, just spectacular what he's been able to do. And I know I was there in the winter workouts. We weren't sure what was happening. We we waited up until the spring semester. Nothing was done. And then uh, speaking of Dunn, Coach Dunn came along and turned everything around. So that's just so great and uh, a great game here today. Great job by California. They, they beat a tough Kutztown team, a 7-0 and coming in the game, and they just absolutely dominated this game. Well, Dylan, it was a great PSAC championship game. It was a beautiful day here at Addison Stadium. Couldn't be any happier with it. It's a clear day out. And California Vulcans win the PSAC championship 49-7 to on Sunday at 5 p.m. Go to the NCAA.com website and watch the selection show. 
you got to think California's going to be number one, but who else is going to be ranked where in the bracket and see what California team may play after their bye week, hopefully, next week. So, again, thanks for watching the PSHU Championship game on CUTV. California wins it 49-7. For Dylan Godet, everyone in our truck and crew, thank you for watching this game. I'm Anthony D'Agostino. Have a great day, everyone.